NFL prospect Charlie Fry, one of the top QBs in college football. Will it be Fry's night on Friday night? Got athlete's foot? Think fast. Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. If you use Tanactin or Lotrimin AF, you'll be treated for four long weeks. But one week with Lamisil AT keeps you athlete's foot free for three months. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot. If you have great credit, shouldn't you get a better rate on your home equity line? At eLoan, you do. We process your loan differently, online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender fees. Apply today at eLoan.com. Pass me the popcorn, it's a family show. Take a bite, pass it around, we love our fun on the go. Pass me the popcorn, hungry for a good time. Grab a box, eat them up, but don't mess with mine. Grab yourself some KFC popcorn chicken. Tender, 100% breast meat, then bursting with that KFC taste. Only a buck ninety-nine, six ninety-nine for a party pack. Pass me the popcorn. We're passing the popcorn in Chicken Capital, USA. Hitting the road to adventure. Map yourself to Marshall University. The legacy of John Marshall, definer of our Constitution, thrives in the mountains of West Virginia. 17,000 Marshall University students in nearly 150 degree programs live and study on a safe, secure, and high-tech campus. From academics to the arts to athletics, Marshall University, taking the high road in higher education. Welcome back to Akron, Ohio. Marshall taking on Akron. He's one of the best quarterbacks in college football. He's probably going to be a first-day draft pick, and many of our viewers may not know the name. For more on Charlie Fry, here's Rob Stone. Well, Dave, it is Charlie Fry Day here in Akron. Seriously, not just another bad pun for me. It's really Charlie Friday here in Akron. The mayor of Akron has proclaimed today Charlie Friday just another step in his long and winding road to success, which began in the small Ohio town of Willard, about an hour and a half away here from Akron. He comes from and preaches a family atmosphere. In fact, his folks, Sally and Dave, come here every Wednesday to feed Charlie and his four football roommates. Charlie was projected to be about a fourth or fifth round NFL pick if he left early last year, but Larry Fitzgerald, a wide receiver now of the Arizona Cardinals, helped persuade him to stay with a phone call telling him how much he'd enjoy playing under brand new head coach J.D. Brookhart, who coached Fitzgerald at the University of Pittsburgh. The numbers don't lie. Fry is having a good year and his NFL stock is rising, and we'll have more on that later in the broadcast. And Rob, it's a good thing that Charlie's a better quarterback than you are a comedian. <laughs> oh, it starts early on uh, Friday night. Yes, it does. J.D. Brookhart in his first year spent the last seven years at Pittsburgh where he coached Larry Fitzgerald. He was the wide receivers coach and the offensive coordinator. And Akron is off to a four and four start and they're just getting used to Brookhart's offense, which is more of a drop back and NFL type of offense, which is different for Fry. He was more of a rollout quarterback prior to this year. There's Bob Pruitt, the head coach for Marshall, as we are underway from Akron. And it'll be Dominic Hickson taking it, and he's up to about the 15-yard line before he slammed the turf. So Akron will start at the 15-yard line. Charlie Fry thought about going pro last year, but because of a middle rounds draft projection and a new coach in Brookhart, Fry decided to stay more of a drop pack passer who can run now, as opposed to a rollout quarterback who would have had to throw in a drop back offense in the NFL. And you know, he's better suited to that drop back pro style offense. So first down from the 15-yard line. Brett Biggs is the running back, but Fry to the air on first down, and his pass is dropped at the 27-yard line. Should have been caught by Hickson, but he couldn't hang on. 
Well, Fry, Trev, basically all new skill players this year. They're all new skill players, but Brett Biggs, the most important one. That running back, he's only 5'9", about 190, but he is taking the pressure off of Fry, generating a running game that they did not have without it. Biggs has more than half of Akron's touchdowns this year, nine rushing and two receiving touchdowns. Second and 10 at the 16. And here is Biggs trying to get to the outside, but Marshall is so fast, it's hard to run sweeps against this defense. Hayes and Atkins fly to the football and minimal gain on that carry. Here's the offensive line for Akron. And the key here in the middle, Jim Barici, the tackles will have to take care of the great ends, but Barici will be all by himself on Reggie Hayes. Key matchup inside. Hayes just had that tackle for a loss. Also has three sacks on the season. What makes Marshall so good on defense, those two guys inside, Jamal Weiss and Reggie Hayes, and we have a flag that flies in on third down and 11. Goddard may have moved from his left defensive end position. May have uh, jumped and drawn contact. Referee tonight is Todd Gearlings. So Goddard was offside. And instead of third and 11, it's third down and six. It's third and six, and that's a passing down. That's bad, because outside, you've got Goddard that leads the nation in sacks. But the other end, Jameis Martin, they say is just as good. Bob Pruitt has the highest winning percentage. You see it there, 821, of any active Division I coach. Third down and six for Fry. And he has time as he stands in there and delivers complete. And Biggs is past the 30 to the 32-yard line. Brent Biggs also a very good receiver out of the backfield. That's his 21st reception. Two seniors and a junior in the linebacking core for Marshall. Well, we talked about Brent Biggs at running back. Keep an eye on Kevin Atkins, middle linebacker. Great run stuffer. His job to mirror Biggs. In the defensive backfield, Chris Royal, the safety, leads the nation in interceptions. He'll have his eyes on Fry all game long. Yeah, six picks for Royal, and he's just a sophomore. First down from the 32, and here's Biggs on the inside handoff. Plows forward past the 35, up to the 37 for about four yards. Tackled by Atkins, who led the team in stops last year with 100. Nicknamed Chief, senior from Richmond, Virginia. And there's really no weakness on this Marshall defense. The defensive line, linebackers, the secondary, there's no place that Akron can look at and say, look, we can exploit them here. Now, 13th in the country in total defense, and they're number one in the country in third down defense, but they're 0 for 1 tonight as Akron has already converted a third down and long. Fry rolling out, and great throw as he is able to hit Hickson in between two Marshall defenders. Dominic Hickson. So what do you do when you got Jonathan Goddard? He's right here. Take a look at how many guys block him. The tackle, the fullback, and the tailback. Finally, the third guy gets him on the ground, and then Fry makes the completion. Hickson with 42 catches on the season. Former safety his first two years, but was recruited as a wide receiver. J.D. Brookhart, the head coach, moved in the wide receiver, and he's their number one guy at that position. Here's Biggs off the left edge, and he gets about six or seven to the 42-yard line before Chris Royal makes the stop. Marshall, 20th in the country in rushing defense, but Akron blowing him off the line right now. We'll take a look up here. This is Jameis Martin, the other defensive end. Outstanding player, but Tim Crouch, the left tackle, took care of him. This will be the key matchup all game long. How will Akron's offensive line handle the outstanding front seven of Marshall? And while Martin and Goddard are very good players, they're a little light at defensive end. And one of the reasons that Georgia beat them earlier in the season was because they were leaning on those guys. And a lot of running plays. Here's Fry on the rollout. And he has it complete. And going to be very close. And it is a first down as Jason Montgomery makes the catch. And uh, this is a bittersweet moment for Montgomery. He hurt his knee last year in the Marshall game and was lost for the season. The numbers for Charlie Fry on the season. 13th in the country in completion percentage. He has started 41 of the last 42 games. The only game he didn't start, Marshall. 
last year down in West Virginia. Fry moving him down the field. Got a first down of the Marshall 37. Here's Biggs again. Man, is he smoked! A gain of two on the play, but Curtis Keyes made him pay for it. What a smack. Wow. Take a look at this. From Biggs' angle, he's going forward, and bam, he's going back. Oh! That looks even worse in slow motion. He just lined him up, form tackle. You get maybe five or six hits like that a season as a defensive back. Marshall defensive coordinator Bill Wilt said that the Keys is one of his favorite players. You can see why after that here. And here's Biggs trying the other side, and he is wrapped up at the ankles and dropped by J.T. Rimber. Again there, Trev, you see the speed of the linebackers getting into the backfield. And they can run. One thing you'll notice all game long is a lot of white jerseys around the ball. They swarm, and they're fast. Now this is the danger zone. Third and nine, this is when the defensive ends will cut loose on the quarterback. There are the great numbers on defense for Marshall. And again, number one in the country in third down defense. And Akron on third down and nine. Flags fly and down goes Fry as Goddard spills him at midfield. But again, a penalty flag down. May have been offside again. Goddard for the second time tonight, perhaps. Offsides, defense, number 50, five-yard penalty, still third down. This time he stands up, but he gets caught on the hard count. He goes a little early, oops, and that's a big break for Akron because now they've got more options. That's the second time they've had third down and long, but because of Goddard's offside, it becomes third down and a more manageable four yards. Fry completed the third down and four last time. About a 20-yard completion. And here's Fry going to keep. And he's got the first down again and more. Touchdown, Charlie Fry. Quarterback that's 6'4, 230 pounds with the speed of Fry, it adds a dimension. Jason Swiger on for the PAT. <laughs> 31 yard rushing touchdown by Charlie Fry. The two big plays on that drive were on third down. Marshall is the best third down defense in college football, but not on that drive. 7 0 Akron. I'm no car expert, but. But I do know what I want. You know what I want? More bang. Bang for my buck. More bang for my buck. From a car and. A car company. That's why I got a Forenza. By Suzuki. Suzuki! Woo! Protected by America's number one warranty. Numero uno. And it's got more room and more features than Civic. Than a Civic. Forenza. It gives so much. And it asks so little. Who says you can't have it all? Forenza! Forenza! <laughs> yeah, I'm calling about my car insurance claim. And since you're like the hundredth person I talked to, um... My claim number is 54737-85Q. Name Mark Powell with two L's. Yes, it was a fender bender. No, it wasn't. Hey, think easier. Think progressive. We give you one person who's responsible for your claim from start to finish. So it's easier to get back on the road. Go to progressive.com. Mmm, something smells good. Delivery? Uh, it's not delivery, it's the journal. DiGiorno? Get out. You fix the oven. You fix the oven? <laughs> You are handy. I'm calling mother. Pizza? 
Introducing DiGiorno Microwave Pizza. Rises up golden brown in minutes. For oven-baked taste in a hurry, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Microwave. Microwave, huh? At least I fixed something. Seven years ago, Bristol Myers Squibb Medicines literally saved my life. I simply wouldn't be here without them. Today, Bristol Myers Squibb researchers are focused on our most serious diseases with revolutionary treatments for cancer and AIDS. These researchers dedicate their lives to fighting our most serious diseases. And these medicines can make the difference for millions of us. I'm living proof of that. Hope, triumph, and the miracle of medicine. Bristol Myers Squibb Company. Well, we said at the outset that Charlie Fry can run. He takes off on a 31-yard touchdown for a 31-yard touchdown on third down and four. And the offensive line, look at right tackle, Mike Griskoyak, number 71, leading the way up on Chris Royal, throws the key block, and that springs Fry for the touchdown. Second rushing touchdown for Fry this season, 13th overall. Coming into this game, needed 171 yards to pass Chad Pennington and move into fourth place all time in the back in total offense. Swiger booting it away, and Span will take the knee. So Marshall's offense takes the field for the first time tonight. It's been an up and down year for the Thundering Herd quarterback, Stan Hill, who's played through all kinds of injuries this year. He missed half of last year with a knee injury. Entering this year number one all time in Marshall. Better than Pennington, better than Leftwich. And completion percentage at 67%, but just 56% this year. From the Marshall 20 yard line. Charles. And with a stiff bar, he's able to pick up about five yards as he shoves Shevin Pace to the ground. Marshall always has good skill people. They do, and none better than Josh Davis. He is poised to move ahead of Randy Moss on the all-time Marshall receptions list in terms of yardage in this game. One catch to tie Darius Watts for the MAC record for most catches in a career. He's only 29 shy of the NCAA record held by former Louisville Cardinal Arnold Jackson. On second and five, another sweep. No, it's a play fair. No, it was a handoff. But down goes the running back as Charles had nowhere to go as DeAndre Earl, the middle linebacker, closed that play down. Loss of about six on the play. Now, the offensive line for Marshall did look very good there. Well, they've lost four of their projected starters prior to the season. Jesse Sato at center will be going up possibly the best defensive player on Akron's team, Kiki Gonzalez, number 97, the nose tackle. It's a matchup we'll be watching the entire game. A junior from Elizabeth, New Jersey, Kiki Gonzalez, three sacks on the year. Well, Akron had two big third down conversions on its touchdown drive. We'll see how Marshall does here on third and 11. They pick up the blitz, and the pass is caught by Bates, but about eight yards shy of the first down. So three and out for Marshall, and the herd will punt. And linebacking core for uh, Akron. Chase Blackburn, the key here. He'll play some linebacker. He will also drop down the defensive end to try to confuse the offensive line. John Fuller at Rover, key to the secondary. He, again, will get up to the line of scrimmage and back out and play in coverage. The idea, see if they can throw off, create confusion. Ian O'Connor will punt. Standing at his eight-yard line. Trying to kick away from Dominic Hickson, who is one of only four players in the country who has a punt and kickoff return for touchdowns. 38-yard kick by O'Connor as he tried to keep it away from Hickson. But it will give Akron very good field position for its second drive of the day. Charlie Fry, who is a terrific senior quarterback with a rushing touchdown already this game, and in the pregame huddle got a hug, or pregame warm-up got a hug from Marshall head coach Bob Pruitt, who told us this week 
that Fry reminds him a lot of former Miami of Ohio quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. Says that he can run and throw, has the arm strength that Roethlisberger does, and boy, is Big Ben having a good year with the Pittsburgh Steelers. 5-0 and as a starting quarterback, as a rookie. Here's a running play that goes nowhere as Goddard rips down Brett Biggs. Brian Roethlisberger, same height. Roethlisberger a little bit bigger at 241 pounds. And in terms of arm strength, Roethlisberger the big cannon, although Fry has got a very strong arm, but the thing that both of them do is know where to go with the ball. They are both outstanding at reading defenses using vision. Second and 11. Fry zips that one in there to the 46-yard line. Ronaldo Williams makes the tackle on Montgomery, who has his second catch of the night. So another third down at about five. Akron's done very well on that so far. And it is critical for Akron to keep third downs in manageable positions. Remember, the defensive ends of Marshall, Martin, Goddard, these guys are outstanding individual pass rushers. And if you give them positions when they can tee off on you, you're in a lot of trouble. They go three wide here. And Fry dumps it off to Biggs. And he can't make that first guy miss. Wouldn't have gotten very far anyway. Chris Royal on the tackle along with Ronaldo Williams. But you know what? That's okay. Punt, they're going to have great field position. What they did by throwing it short instead of giving those defensive ends a chance to tee off was survive a hit or potential hit on Fry. So Bill Sullivan will come on to punt. Emmanuel Spann back to receive. Spann, a true freshman from Washington, D.C. And fair caught at the 22-yard line. 34-yard punt. No return from Spann. 7-0 Akron. Marshall's offense back in the field, and we return. We've got the whole league covered on the hardest working pregame show in football. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Old Spice, 11 a.m. on ESPN. You've got some viewing to do. Taco Bell's Zesty Chicken Border Bowl is made right when you order it, so it tastes even better. Grilled all-white meat chicken, hot steaming rice, cool crisp lettuce, and Fiesta salsa. For a freshly prepared meal, think outside the bun. I consider myself smart. In the know. Practical. Practical. So when I wanted a new SUV... I did my homework. I found the perfect one. Suzuki XL7. Tons of standard features. Tons of standard features. I like the V6. V6. I like the V6. It's seat 7. Seat 7. And it comes with peace of mind. Because it comes with America's number one warrant. It's family-friendly SUV. That's big, big. That's big on adventure! Now that's smart. That's smart. X Energizer. Keep going. ESPN 2's College Football Prime Time, brought to you by Suzuki. More and more people are making the smart move to Suzuki. And Progressive. Think easier. Think Progressive. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. First place in the MAC East on the line tonight. The Zips leading Marshall 7-0. Marshall coming into this game perfect in the Mac at 5 and 0, Akron at 4 and 1, Miami of Ohio at 5 and 1. So if Akron wins, a three-way tie atop the Mac East. Ahmad Bradshaw, a true freshman running back into the game and he goes nowhere. Bradshaw dropped at the point of attack by the middle linebacker DeAndre Earl. Here's the Mac West standings. Northern Illinois at 6 0. Toledo, one game back. The Northern Illinois just broke into the rankings at 24, although Bowling Green might be playing the best football in the entire Mac right now. We just threw out some of those uh, great records from the East. Only two teams from the Mac will go to bowl games, most likely the winners of the Eastern and Western divisions. Here's a pass that should have been picked off by Pace right through his hands. Mm -hmm. 
The bowl tie-ins for the Mid-American Conference are the GMAC Bowl and the Motor City Bowl. GMAC Bowl will get first pick, and then the Motor City Bowl will choose. Marshall did not go to a bowl game last year. Six and two record in the league and no bowl game. That's a rarity for this program. They've won five of the last seven conference championships. And six of the last seven division titles, with the exception being last year. White clock winding down. Hill on third down and ten. Hit as he delivers, and it's caught. First down. Brad Bates with the grab. Tremendous throw by Hill. That's a gain of 14 yards and a first down. Tremendous throw because of the blitz that came right in his face. They twisted on the right side, and he can see this coming the whole way. He gets drilled by Fuller, the rover, and still delivers a perfect shot. It's one of the things that they love about Stan Hill. He knows the offense in the tradition of a Chad Pennington, of a Byron Leverage. First down at the Marshall 37. And Hill out of the shotgun. And here's Bates again. Gain of about seven or eight. Three catches already for Brad Bates. We're in Akron, Ohio at the Rubber Bowl. Marshall winners of five straight. Akron winners of three in a row. Dave Pash with Trevor Manish. Rob Stone roaming the sidelines. Marshall and Akron playing on Friday night. Day nine of 19 days of football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. It is Charlie Friday here in Akron. Fry already with a touchdown, the lone score in the game. Here comes a blitz, but it's a run play. And down goes Charles, very close to the line at the 47-yard line. Dion Eli tripped him up. That third down pass play to Bates was huge. Marshall did not get any rhythm going at all in their first series. They were three and out. They sat at three and ten when that blitz, or third and ten, when that blitz came in to Stan Hill, hit him right in the face, knocked him down, but he got the first down to Bates, and now they've got a rhythm going. They're starting to move the chains. We talked a lot about their defense in the open and how good they are on the defensive side of the football as uh, it is good enough to move the chains the run by Charles but Bob Pruitt's always had good offensive teams 12 players drafted under Pruitt I mentioned Pennington and Marshall or uh, Pennington and Leftwich and Moss and, and Darius Watts was the second round pick of the Broncos they've always had good offensive plays and, and this is a good offense it's just overshadowed by their defense not this year though the defense is the one coming to the fore exactly From the 47, here's Josh Davis's first catch as he ties the Mid-American Conference record for receptions, matching the aforementioned Darius Watts with 272 catches, and the lights have gone out here. The lights on the near side of the field have gone out. Saturday, 19 days of primetime football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC continues with day 10. Sylvester Croom in Mississippi State taking on Alabama. College football Saturday primetime on ESPN2 at 6.30 Eastern. Croom was an All-American center at Alabama. Grew up in Tuscaloosa. Thought he had the Alabama job. But uh, Alabama decided to go with Mike Schumer. There are the lights that uh, aren't working right now at the uh, antiquated rubber bowl. The antiquated is right. Some would say dilapidated. This is like the old days before they could get a lot of lights up here. This stadium was built in 1940. The, the nicest thing you can say about it really is that it's a dump. You know, they, they really need an on-campus stadium, a new stadium. Now, the field is nice. The, the field turf is relatively new. But the infrastructure, the, the seating, it all is pretty awful. It's about seven miles from campus, and there have been so many upgrades to the campus. J.D. Brookhart was telling us that it's an amazing transformation what we've seen to the campus of the University of Akron over the last nine months. New practice facility. It was a city school, and it looks more like a university now because of some of the new buildings and such, but they've got to do something about 
where they play their games, and that's getting a new stadium. Well, that's a huge thing because in the past, Akron was a bit of an afterthought. But now, in the last nine months, they've come up with a new student union, a new field house, indoor practice facility. The Denver Broncos practice here for their preseason game in Canton, Ohio. Mike Shanahan said it was the nicest that he'd seen, nicer than what the Broncos play in. This is their new locker room. It's as nice as any locker room in the country. And J.D., head coach, Brookhart says that recruits buy with their eyes, and they've got a lot to look at now with their eyes on campus, but not here at the Rubber Bowl. Well, we don't have a lot to look at right now because the lights aren't working. Added lights here to the stadium, and they're, they're out right now. Akron leads Marshall 7-0. The nation's number one football program has the game plan for the November stretch run. Boom! They got a hit. From BCS Breakdown. They got to get a big, big win to impress the human voters. To analysis of all the day's games. It's going to come down to one thing. Who's going to win the battle on the outside? To Heisman handicapping. It's all about me. Strong oh, this cat. Plus, the fall of Purdue's Kyle Orton. From Heisman favorite to bench. What happened? College game day. Built by the Home Depot. Saturday at 10.30 on ESPN. Imagine your life with a personal assistant, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That's Infone. Just call 888-411-1111 or go to Infone.com to join. So what do you get with Infone? You get driving directions. I am so late. Where is 1000 Oakmont? No problem. Take it right up there. Flight information. Chicago shut down. You get hotel reservations. Put them in that room right there. You get restaurant reservations. I'm starved. How about Italian? Sounds good, but where? No problem. Movie times and reviews. Perfect, but look at the line. We'll even help you buy the tickets. And don't forget our unique voice email feature. Oh, I forgot my computer. I really need to send that email. No problem. You got your phone? Call 888-411-1111 or go to infone.com. Sign up is free. First five calls are free. Infone. Imagine your life with a personal assistant. Yes. Welcome back to Akron. The lights are coming back on. There was a generator problem behind the stadium with the Musco lighting, which is basically like a rented set of lights for this football field. The bank of light just started coming on about 30 seconds ago. There's about 15 large circular bulbs that emanate the light out onto the field. About four of them, no, make that three of them, are left to be completely lit. But it looks like the field is in good shape, guys. I don't see any shadows, and I think they should be able to play with it. Did you major in electricity or something at Colgate? <laughs> I knew you were smart, but man. I, I majored in English. I minored in electricity. Okay. All right. You didn't go over there and, and stick your finger in that socket to make it work, did you? <laughs> well, at least they got him working. And how about Josh Davis now? He ties the MAC record for catches in a career, and the lights go up. Well, maybe the lights were impressed. He tied that record of. Darius Watts, uh, who's now with the Denver Broncos, a second round pick last year. They are resetting the game clock, by the way. That's uh, what the holdup was. So, second and three. And here's Bradshaw trying to get around the end. Nice cutback. And he's able to pick up the first down of the 43 yard line. Tackled by Dorian Beard, backup nose man. He set that record, record Josh Davis did, of Darius Watts. Watts was drafted by the Denver Broncos in the second round last year, and he made a great combo with Josh Davis. And, and this year, Davis hasn't had the numbers that he's had in the past. Just because Watts is gone, that's number one. And number two, they haven't had the production from the quarterback. Stan Hill has been injured. The offensive line has not been up to par so far this season. Marshall head coach Bob Pruitt says that uh, Davis is better than Watts. And here he is again getting inside the 40 to the 38 yard line before Earl makes the stop. Actually, that's Brad Bates, number 83, who already has four catches this season or in this game for Marshall tonight. Well, look at Randy Moss. Great player. Came here in the last year of 1AA and then moved into A. Transferred from Florida State University. Then you've got Darius Watts, second round draft choice last year of the Denver Broncos. And now Josh Davis. With one more catch, he'll break Watts' all-time MAC record for receptions. 
with that previous catch that uh, Davis had, he moved ahead of Randy Moss for fifth, or make the third all-time at Marshall in receiving yards. And here is Davis with the catch at the 30. Thrown out of play by Henry. 273rd career reception for Josh Davis. School and conference record. Well, he's a state sprint champion in South Carolina, so he's got the speed, but one thing he does even better than Darius Watts is go over the middle, make the catch in traffic and take the big hit. We just saw him on the sideline catch, and we knew he could do that, but it's impressive the courage that he has when he goes inside. Caught 79 balls as a freshman, which at the time was an NCAA record. It's since been broken. Long drive by Marshall in part because the lights went out. And here's Hill throwing on the run. Nearly threw another interception as Chase Blackburn dove for it. Brad Bates, the intended receiver. A nice coverage by Akron. They don't have a lot of speed in that defensive backfield. And so they rely on zone coverage and rely on the pass rush to beat this weakened offensive line to the quarterback, Stan Hill. That time Hill had all kinds of time to throw. He still couldn't get it to a receiver. 11th play of the drive coming up. Again, that's three minutes and 49 seconds of game time, but about to 15 minutes in actual time as Charles slips down at the 32-yard line. That's the second time that he slipped running to the right side of the field. So it brings up third down and long. Well, it's been raining the last several days, and even though this is artificial turf, field turf, if you get your feet too far out like he does there, his inside foot, you don't get the flat surface of the cleats onto the ground, and you slide out. He'll change in the play on third down and 11. Late clock at three. As Hill's pass is knocked in the air, and it's picked off at the 40-yard line by Akron. Gonzalez batted it into the air. It was intercepted by Brian White. It's one of the key matchups we talked about. Kiki Gonzalez right in the center of your screen. He comes right up the middle, beats the center, gets his hand up. Kiki Gonzalez, considered the best defensive player on Akron's team, comes up with a massive play right there now. He's right smack in the center. He's working against Doug Ligurski at center. His penetration causes the tip ball, and White is right there for the pick. Charlie Fry was the lone touchdown of the game, a rushing score, rolls out, and has it. Knocked away at the last second. Good defensive play by Curtis Keyes to keep the running back Biggs from pulling it in. Well, Fry is in an offense that specifies drop back passing, but uh, we're seeing a lot of rollouts tonight from Fry. Well, we are, partly to roll away from that great pass rush of Marshall. But this is different, this offense, than the offenses he's been in since he's been in Akron, where in the past he didn't have to make a lot of decisions. In this offense, it's a pro-style West Coast offense. He needs to make a lot of decisions. From the shotgun on second and 10. Inside running play to Biggs, trying to spin to the outside, but all over it is Willie Smith, the right cornerback, a junior from Florida. Well, the scouts love Charlie Fry, the Akron quarterback. There are 20 scouts here at this game tonight. Well, the things they love about him are things that are hard to coach. He's got a knack for buying time in the pocket, for avoiding the pass rush, and yet still delivering the ball. He's got great vision. He's got the ability to look down the field, see which receivers are coming open far away from his primary assignment. Four straight games in which Fry has not thrown an interception. On third down and 10, Fry flushed out of the pocket. Gets away from one man. And now he's going to air it out. He's got a man. But it's intercepted. Just as I say that it's four straight games plus without a pick. Curtis Keyes intercepts him inside the 20 yard line. And Fry had Ellington wide open down the field and under threw him. Well, he threw it up so that Ellington could make a play on the ball. And Ellington didn't come back for it. Fry does a great job. We mentioned his ability to buy time. 
when the rush gets there, he takes off. And then he has the presence of mind to keep his eyes down the field and watch the altitude on this ball. He throws it way up in the air so that Ellington can make a play on it. But Ellington does not. The defensive back gets in front of it, and the interception occurs. So Marshall's offense back on the field. The 116 to go in the opening quarter. 7-0 Akron. It's a battle for the top spot in the MAC East. Marshall undefeated in conference play. As this run goes nowhere as Bradshaw is dropped again in the backfield by White and Blackburn. Marshall having a lot of troubles rushing the football tonight against Akron's defense. Well, they're getting a lot of penetration. Now, this is the, the play from front. Now, he's going to roll out to his right. As he breaks contain, he keeps his eyes down the field, and he points. He says, Ellington, go, go, go. And this is Ellington down here. Ellington in the middle of the field. But then, instead of crossing in front of the defensive back, he crosses behind him, and therefore, Curtis Keyes gets the interception. Hill's pass is caught at the 21-yard line for a gain of about five as they get Bates again with the, his fifth catch. First pick in 128 throws by Fry, span of over four games. Well, he's not happy about that. He feels like that should have been caught. And really, wide receivers practice every day on making plays on balls that are locked and high in the air. He just can't believe that Ellington didn't get in front of Keys. Got a stoppage of play with five seconds remaining in the quarter. The stadium clock is seven seconds. There we go. Third down and eight. Wow. So Marshall lets the clock run out. With the you have won the first quarter with Bob Pruitt's team down seven nothing, and a third down and long coming up for his for his offense. Lone touchdown in the first quarter. A 31-yard rushing score by Charlie Fry. Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. I'm no car expert, but... But I do know what I want. You know what I want? More bang. Bang for my buck. More bang for my buck. From a car and... A car company. That's why I got a Forenza. By Suzuki. Suzuki! Protected by America's number one warranty. Numero uno. And it's got more room and more features. Than Civic. Than a Civic. Forenza. It gives so much. And it asks so little. Who says you can't have it all? Forenza! Forenza! <laughs> BASF, we don't make the golf clubs. We make them more powerful. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Your buddies on Pathway to Glory, the wireless online multiplayer war game, only on the Engage QD. Rated T for Teen. Engage anyone, anywhere. Can I take your order? Yeah, I'll have the stuffed chicken marsala. Oh, me too. You know what? Then I'm gonna get the stuffed chicken limone. Ooh, that sounds good too. Why don't I get the limone? You get the marsala, and we'll switch. <laughs> Try two great dishes from Olive Garden: stuffed chicken marsala, bursting with Italian cheeses and sun-dried tomatoes in a creamy marsala sauce, and new stuffed chicken limone in a light lemon butter sauce, both with endless salad and breadsticks. Switch. Share. Olive Garden. <laughs> when you're here, your family. Remember that guy who used to be called Wild Thing? Yeah, that guy. He's back. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. Yeah, that's right. My check card was stolen. They spent $1,280? Uh, no, it's just I'm, I'm going on vacation in, uh, 
in, you know, a week. If your check card is ever lost or stolen and used... So how long will, will it take to get my money back? Tomorrow? We'll put back the missing money next business day. Oh, tomorrow's... Guaranteed. Tomorrow's great. Bank of America. Higher standards. Welcome back to the Rubber Bowl in Akron, Ohio. The home team, the Zips, leading Marshall 7-0 after one quarter of play. Akron's defense has been playing pretty well. Normally, they allow 200 yards rushing per game, and they've given up 22 rushing touchdowns this season, but Bob Pruitt's team has struggled to run the football against the Zips so far in the game. They've been forced to do a lot of third down and long situations, and here comes the third down and eight. Akron blitzes. And Hill delivers as Davis makes the grab and gets to the 39-yard line for a first down. 18-yard pickup on the play. Dave Pash alongside Trevor Maddich. And we're pleased at this time to welcome in normally the third member of our crew, but uh, he's out in Salt Lake City getting ready for Utah and Colorado State, Rod Gilmore. Rod, how you doing, man? All right, guys. How you doing? Right. Finally decided to work without me, Great. huh? <laughs> we miss you, man. It's not the same without you. Uh, feelings mutual. Right, How's it going? Well, we're watching uh, an interesting game, to say the least. We thought that uh, we'd have a low-scoring game. We've got one so far. What do you think so far from what you've seen in this game? Well, I think you guys were right that it was going to be a defensive struggle, but I got to tell you, I like the way Stan Hill is playing. I think this is the best he's played a quarterback this season. Does have an interception, but that was a pass that was batted down at the line, and here he delivers another completion inside Akron territory to the 46-yard line as it's caught by Emmanuel Spann for 14 yards. There are a handful of teams, guys, right now, non-BCS schools that are ranked in the top 25. Trevor mentioned earlier Northern Illinois. The top-ranked team among non-BCS schools is Utah. Rod, you will see the Utes uh, tomorrow night What's, what's been like out there this week? What's Urban Meyer been talking about in regards to his team and the matchup with uh, Colorado State? Well, I think they're they're very businesslike. I think they expect to, to play well tomorrow night. They're very much aware of all the attention that they're receiving this season. Nice catch there. They're very well, that was very well aware of everything that's going around them. Two, but I think they, they expect to play at a high level. Uh, so far, the outside attention about the BCS has been important, but not as significant as, you know, the Urban Meyer stuff. The players are aware that Meyer is getting some attention, but they're really trying to hone in and focus on their ballgames. First down at the Akron 34-yard line. Yeah, Hill to throw again. And he leads Bradshaw beautifully down the sideline. And Bradshaw is going to score. Touchdown, Marshall. They're coming right at you. They've been hitting the middle of the field. And now they go outside. Bradshaw very quick at running back, walks the tightrope, they miss him on the tackle, and by going outside after several plays in a row down the middle, they get that long touchdown. Bradshaw originally enrolled at Virginia, had some off-the-field problems. UVA revoked the scholarship. Marshall is glad to have Bradshaw. You see the talent from the true freshman as O'Connor's PAT is good. Game is tied at seven after a six-play, 81-yard drive. It took two minutes and 48 seconds. 19 days of primetime football on ESPN. ESPN2 and ABC continues with day 10 on Saturday. First at 745 Eastern Miami. Taking on Clemson. And then Utah, Colorado State, 945 Eastern on ESPN2. And, Rod, it almost seems like Utah doesn't control their own destiny for BCS. At number six right now, even if they win out, the team's right behind them. Uh, them. If they win, we're talking Texas, we're talking Tennessee, possibly Georgia. If they win out, they're likely to leave Utah. 
Well, there is that possibility that one loss teams from uh, from BCS conferences can overtake Utah, but I don't think they are really focused on that right now. And if they keep dominating in the Mountain West as they have and, and pay attention to their games, they've not had a close ball game. I mean, they've really dominated. So I think they will continue to pick up votes if they do that. Then it's going to come down to the computers. But I think the coaches' poll and the writers' poll will be impressed with them if they continue to dominate and they don't squeak by in any ball games. Do you think they'll run up the score in order to get those votes? <laughs> well, I, I think that's become a reality. If you pay attention to you know what Bob Stoops said at Oklahoma against Kansas, he felt like he had to go for a score. We asked Urban Meyer about that today, and you know, he said he doesn't like to do that. He, he thinks it's a sad day in college football when you have to run up the score for points. And in four games this far, this far this season, he didn't do it when he had the chance to. Charlie Fry back on the field. The Akron offense turning it over the last time it had the ball as Fry threw his first interception in over 120 passes. 120 passes consecutively without a pick. A span of four plus games. Here Fry is looking deep and lofting it up, and he's got a man down there. It's Jabari Arthur. But he dropped the ball inside the 30 yard line. The redshirt freshman from Montreal blew by everybody, but couldn't hang on. Would have had a touchdown. Wow. Arthur, actually, their second string quarterback, they've got him playing wide receiver because they lost six of, the, of their top seven from last year, and Fry pays the price. He just gets drilled into the ground by Weiss. Doesn't even know if it's caught, but by the reaction of the crowd, once Weiss gets up, he knows it was dropped. What an opportunity missed. 129 yards already for Charlie Fry, or make that to Hill. Fry's number's not as good, but he hasn't thrown it as much as Hill has. And here Fry getting out of trouble, but then finally wrapped up and sacked by Kevin Atkins. Well, Rod, we talked earlier about the 20 NFL scouts that are here to look at Akron quarterback Charlie Fry. What are you hearing about Fry and his chances of being a first-day draft pick? Well, you know, everybody likes his mobility and the fact that he has, you know, a good arm. It's not not a cannon, but he does have a good arm, and he's moving very well. Even on that sack, you saw him buy some time, and he just didn't have enough time to find someone down the field. So scouts like him. They still think he's a first-day pick, and, and I like him, too. I think he's a pretty good quarterback. Marshall QB. And we get another offside as uh, Goddard jumped for the third time, but they're probably going to decline it. As a Bix takes it past the 30 for a first down. They so you guys have a good matchup with uh, with Fry against Stan Hill because a lot of scouts like Stan Hill as well. well Stan Hill. Offsides. Number 50. Defense. Penalties decline. First down. So Stan. Offside penalty against uh, Marshall that has hurt the Thunder here tonight. Yeah, and Stan Hill has had to overcome injury, and he was hurt last year, torn a ligament in his knee, and he's back physically 100%, but, but mentally there's a question as to whether he's all the way back to his game. From the Akron 30-yard line, first down. It'll be big straight ahead. Slams forward for about two yards. Let's check in with Rob Stone on the sideline. Dave, I took an informal exit poll, if you will, with some of the NFL scouts that were here pregame talking about Charlie Fry. They all agreed on a series of the topics. They all thought he'd be a first-day NFL draft pick. They all said they like his toughness, his athleticism, his feel, his presence. One scout said to me, I need to see his arm strength tonight. I know it's good. I want to see if he has enough zip on the ball. And one general manager told me if he plays in the senior bowl and plays well, he can move up out of a third-round pick into the second, maybe first. All right, Rob, second and eight, and it's a draw to Biggs, and Marshall is not fooled. Adrian Davis, backup defensive tackle, makes the play, but another penalty flag down. This one thrown in the defensive backfield. Hey, guys, you know, Briggs has got to hit the hole a little faster sometimes. It looks like 
tonight. He's danced a little bit in the backfield, and I'm sure they want him to just get the ball and go with it a little bit more. Well, that's There's no foul on the play. There was a low block beyond 10 yards. No foul. Yeah. Rob, I th Rod, I think you're right about that. When you watch him in practice and watch him on film, you see Biggs, one of his great attributes is getting into the line fast. Get that small 5'10 frame behind those offensive line quickly. But he's starting to dance before he gets up into the hole in this game. Third down and long. Akron has done pretty well on third downs tonight against the top team in the country. Defensively on third down. Try going deep. Trying for Arthur again. This time it's overthrown. Final question for you, Rod. Any chance Utah falls tomorrow night? Well, you know, I, I think Utah's playing at a high level. I don't know that that they're gonna fall. I mean, you know, we're still talking about young men who are 18 to 22 years old, so anything can happen. But I think right now Utah is playing as well as anybody in the country. They're just they're just rolling on all cylinders, particularly Alex Smith. He just seems to get better week after week, and he's finally put himself into the Heisman race, which I think you guys were calling for maybe a couple of weeks ago. Sullivan to boot it away. Bradshaw, who has the touchdown for Marshall, pulls it in and gets drilled immediately by Blackburn. Well, Rod, we appreciate the time. I know you moved on to the big time on Saturday, but we appreciate you spending some time with us Friday, peasants. Good luck tomorrow night. We'll see you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later, big timers. All right. All right, Rod. Have a great one there. Rod will do the Utah-Colorado State game tomorrow night on ESPN2. We'll have more of our game after this with the contest tied at 7. Trip? Yes. That's cool. Okay. What are we waiting for? Waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. You are in for a treat. You're gonna be right down in front. Morning. Can be able to see the whites of Michael Waltrip's eyes. How about that? Bobby, come on. Best Western, the official hotel of NASCAR. Race to bestwesternracing.com right now for up to 50% off on your next stay. This holiday, put up lights and don't take them down. Deck your halls and leave them decked. You can at The Home Depot. Get started while there's still time with no payments, no interest till January 2006 on everything you need to get your home in the holiday spirit and everything else in the store. Just use your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. For holiday home improvements, nobody has lower prices, guaranteed, and nobody has more know-how. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Friday night lights are shining on Stan Hill. He's played pretty well, does have an interception, but that was not his fault. Pass was batted in the air at the line and picked off by a defensive tackle. Otherwise, Hill has been pretty good. He's got a touchdown pass. There's another one that's batted down to the line. Blackburn got a hand on it there. This is an impressive job by Akron's defense. By all rights, this group 
shouldn't be able to shut down, especially the running game of Marshall. And they're doing a good job with the passing game as well. Several batted passes. They're doing it by attacking the line of scrimmage, and the offensive line of Marshall is struggling with that. Flag flies. Here's another catch by Josh Davis, and he lost the ball at the 41-yard line. I think he got it back, though. DeAndre Earl hit him pretty hard across the middle. Again, the penalty flag is down. So false start against Marshall. Let's take a look at our ESPN two-game track. But what we've seen really is the defensive struggle today. Charlie Fry, who came into this game as far and away the best offensive player on this team, has thrown the ball well, but the touchdown came on a quarterback draw. Terrific run. And then Marshall throws the ball to the sidelines. This play sets the all-time MAC record to Josh Davis for reception. It was Darius Watts, his teammate's record, Last year, this year, he broke it. And banged up after catching that football and getting leveled by DeAndre Earl. Stan Hill, the Marshall quarterback, needs Davis to win this football game. So far, Hill 11 out of 15, 129 yards passing, a touchdown, and the interception. Here comes a blitz, picked up. And that pass thrown behind the intended receiver, Wilbur Hargrove. Miscommunication between the QB and the wide receiver there. Yeah, that was miscommunication. That's one thing that, that Marshall quarterbacks pride themselves on is knowing where to go with the ball. And again, this tradition of Chad Pennington, Byron Leftwich, they are they are studying freaks. They watch so much film, they know the offense so well, they know where to go. And so when there's a miscommunication, it's almost always on the receiver. They're down in 15 for Stan Hill, who played for his dad, John, at Tupelo High School in Oxford, Mississippi. And there's another terrific throw by Hill as he finds Tremel Guillory. Just Guillory's second catch on the year. That's a 15-yard gain, but a yard shy of the first down marker. And when you talk about knowing where to go, last time Akron blitz. This time they only rush three. There's eight guys in coverage. Guillory finds the hole and Smith finds him. You aren't going to see a better throw than that by Stan Hill. He had a guy all over him. He had to adjust his arm to complete that pass. Unfortunately for Marshall, it's a yard shy of the first down, and Ian O'Connor will punt it away. Dominic Hickson set to return. Has a punt return for a touchdown already this season. And a kick return for a score as well. One of four players in the country with both. O'Connor with an excellent kick. But it's too good. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. Akron's offense retakes the field. Tied with Marshall at 7. 9.36 to go in the second quarter. Who's rising? Who's shining? Who's next? ESPN the magazine. On newsstands now. Breakfast Club Toaster. Sonic's got it, others don't. Try a new Breakfast Club Toaster sandwich. Made with egg, cheese, tomato, ham, and bacon on Sonic's thick Texas toast. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Where does reality end and pure vision begin? It all starts with a Pioneer Plasma display. The purest color, the purest experience. Pure vision. Only from Pioneer. Got athlete's foot? Think fast. Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. If you use Tenactin or Lotrimin AF, you'll be treating for four long weeks. But one week with Lamisil AT keeps you athlete's foot free for three months. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot. This holiday, still not done. Cook your bird in about an hour with an electric fryer big enough to cook a turkey, only from the Home Depot. Just set the automatic temperature control on this Charm Glow electric fryer and you'll get a juicy, perfectly brown turkey in record time. All for only $99.98. Order now to get free shipping. 
So call, click, or visit your local Home Depot store today for inspiring gifts. And our gift card. It's on everyone's list. I'm done. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. We are right next to the Soapbox Derby. Trev and I had a rental cars out there before the game. Right next to the Rubber Bowl here in Akron, Ohio. This is also the first nationally televised home game for Akron since 1986. Talk about that Soapbox Derby, boy. You can, you can wipe out fairly spectacularly in a Soapbox Derby. <laughs> Charlie Fry on first down, hands off for Biggs. Does a lot of dancing, but nowhere to run as he is stood up at the line by Atkins and Wilson. 1986, we said the last time that uh, there was a home game televised here in Akron. J.D. Brookhart was in his first year as head coach, was playing wide receiver at Colorado State back in 1986. Originally walked on at BYU, then transferred to Colorado State, had a tryout with the Rams, it failed. Then he went into business for himself, was a salesman until the mid-90s. And he got into coaching. More on that after this play. On second and ten, Fry on the rollout. And he gets taken down in line of scrimmage. Brings up third down and long. Well, he, he got sales training from Xerox, but realized even though he was working six hours a day, making six figures, he was not happy. He wanted to get into coaching. And so he had a friend who knew Denver Broncos coach Mike Shanahan. He got an interview with Shanahan, and for a half an hour, Shanahan told Brookhart he had no place for him. 11 objections. Brookhart, at the end of that half hour, overcame all 11 and got himself on to be an assistant in training camp. Assisting what? Oh, putting gas in cars, passing out practice jerseys, but that's how he got his start. Did a great sales job to keep Charlie Fry from going to the NFL as Fry eludes one man and throws it away. Avoids the sack inside the 10-yard line as Goodard was all over him. The nation's leading sacker, Jameis Martin, also put pressure on Fry. Those two defensive ends very good for Marshall. Fry has had his hands full tonight. There's a penalty flag down at the 18-yard line. I don't know if that pass got past the line of scrimmage. If it didn't, that's grounding. Pass has to get past the line of scrimmage, even if you are outside the tackle box. And they're going to bust Fry here, it looks like. Yeah, if you're inside the tackle box, the ball has to be in the vicinity of a receiver, regardless of where it is. If you're outside the tackle box, you can throw it away, even if there's not a receiver there, as long as it lands outside or beyond the line of scrimmage. No, it did that not. Was That's close. the right call. No, I think like when he threw it out of bounds, it landed out of play at about the 17. Yeah, it did. It wasn't, it wasn't heinous, but it was not all the way to the line of scrimmage. So now Bill Sullivan has to punt three yards deep in the end zone. The true freshman Ahmad Bradshaw has the lone touchdown for Marshall on a screen pass. He is back to receive. Stands at the 45 of Akron. Span is also back there as well for Marshall. Take the clock down to five. And it'll be Span with a great chance at a return, but he stumbles and falls down at the 41 yard line. Yamari Dixon on the stop. There is a penalty flag down, gonna be a face mask. Somebody got a hand in there and grabbed the mask of Span. It'll probably be a five yarder instead of a personal foul. But a face mask should be the call here against Akron. Yeah, the difference is a five-yarder is when... No ball on the play. Oh, didn't go. The play was pushed. First down. Interesting. There was an Akron player, got a hand in there, and touched the mask, but no call. We're tied at seven midway through the second quarter. Mm, hey, baby. It's been a while. What do you say we get together? 
You know, just for old times. Couches can be so seductive. You need serious motivation to get up and move on. Garmin Forerunner, the wristband personal trainer with GPS, calculates speed, distance, pace, navigation, even calories burned. Forerunner, a better way to run for your life. Mmm, over here, baby. Oh. My cable company's acting different, and frankly, it's freaking me out. Call us if you have any questions. Lately, they've been using these new words like, yes, and they're on time, and they're friendly. I mean, who does that? Suddenly, my TV cable is supercharging my computer internet, and my computer is acting more like a TV. Bam, it's right there. That's not right. <laughs> It's giving me the willies. That was then. This is Comcast. As you can see, the phones never stop ringing here at Safe Auto Insurance Company. Right this minute, people just like you are calling and getting car insurance while they wait. Truth is, many people find out too late what the penalties are for driving without insurance. You could lose your license. Pay heavy fines. Even get your car impounded. So call right now. As you can see, representatives are standing by. Play it safe. Pick up the phone. The call is free. Pick up the phone. The call is free. Play it safe. one 800 Welcome back to Akron, where we are tied at sevens. We are joined now by the man who we saw the opening of our broadcast, giving a little pep talk, two-time Pro Bowler. And, and tell me a little bit, uh, Junior Seau gave you some motivation, Jason, for that uh, emotional speech, didn't he? Yeah, he gave us a uh, very heartfelt speech this past week uh, after he got injured and had to go home and get surgery. And, and uh, so when Coach asked me tonight if I talked to the team, I thought for a minute, you know, I didn't want to because I didn't have anything to say. And, I thought, heck, I'll just use juniors and kind of put my own words in this. I'm not plagiarizing, but it was, uh, you know, what I said was true, and what he told us, what Junior told us was very true. It's, it, uh, it's, it's a great game. You're here to be honored at halftime, putting the ring of fame here at Akron. Tell me a little bit about the MAC and, and why are we seeing so much high-level NFL caliber talent coming out of the MAC, coming from schools like Marshall and Akron the last couple of years? No, you get a, you get a few guys that come out and have success from a small from relatively small football schools and a small conference and they have some success and it opens the eyes of I think GMs and personnel guys in the NFL and, and give more guys shots you know and there's so many guys playing well now from this conference and you know the, the, mainly you, you know you think of Randy Moss and Chad Bainson and and uh, you know it's there's a lot of guys in this league that can play you know, Charlie Fry is going to have a chance to play in this league in the NFL sometime and, and uh, you know, there's, there's a lot more out there that's going to find them from your defensive standpoint what's your impression of Charlie Fry um He's, he's doing well. I, I think he's a good quarterback. I haven't seen a whole lot of him play. I've heard a lot about him. I've seen him tonight. Uh, he could throw the ball for sure, run around, make some things happen. But uh, he hasn't he hasn't faced me yet. So if he, when, he, when, he, when he gets in our league, we'll be at, he'll, this will be a little different ball game for him, but he'll be all right. I like the threat, Jason. Very nice. Enjoy your flight back to Miami where, guys, he's flying back and bringing his GM, Rick Spielman, with him. I love it. I can't wait for the dynamics on that flight. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Rob, interesting that – Jason would say he hasn't played against me yet. He might be on Jason's team next year. Rick Spielman, the Miami GM, has been watching film on Fry, and uh, he's not the only one that uh, thinks that uh, Fry will be an excellent NFL quarterback. And Miami Dolphins have been struggling at quarterback, and so it's possible they might pick him up, and he'll fly back in a private jet, a Citation 10. That's a fast jet, about 600 miles an hour. Taylor a little bit lighter in the wallet this week finds 7500 bucks for a late hit on Mark Bolger of the St. Louis Rams a couple weeks ago. Still has enough to pay for the plane trip though as Davis pulls it in inside the five and gets to the one yard line before he's tackled. Age him in on the stop but Josh Davis nearly had his fourth touchdown of the season. And credit the offensive line of Marshall the much maligned offensive line of Marshall giving protection. He was able to set back step up deliver the ball on time and when the offensive line has given Smith protection he has found the open receiver and made the completions Davis is playing hurt too had to hobble out of the game again first down and goal touchdown Marshall Earl Charles with the touchdown from one yard out You saw the great numbers from Stan Hill compared to Charlie Fry, the Akron quarterback. Hill's got a pretty good running game. Charles with a one yard rushing touchdown. Bradshaw with a receiving touchdown off a screen pass from Hill. A 
extra point good. 14-7. Marshall takes the lead. As Charles leaps for Pater. Hill leaps for joy. His team is up by seven. For those who never quit. The battery that never quits. Energizer. Keep going. This holiday, put up lights and don't take them down. Deck your halls and leave them decked. You can at The Home Depot. Get started while there's still time with no payments, no interest till January 2006 on everything you need to get your home in the holiday spirit and everything else in the store. Just use your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. For holiday home improvements, nobody has lower prices, guaranteed, and nobody has more know-how. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Scent is the strongest sense tied to memory. All right, everybody, we're back. How will you be remembered? Introducing Red Zone Body Spray in four great scents that all last longer than the leading body spray. He's so great. Red Zone Body Spray. Spice things up all day, all night. Gotta go. Energizer. Keep going. Stan Hills, Marshall Thundering Herd, leading Akron 14-7 midway through the second quarter. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, ABC's college football features terrific regional action. You'll see either Minnesota, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Maryland, Virginia, or Oregon Cal. Check local listings for the game in your area. Texas A&M trying to bounce back after that upset against Baylor last weekend. The Texas A&M, the last best shot for people rooting against Oklahoma to get the Sooners knocked off. They were looking ahead, looking past Baylor, got knocked off by Baylor, but I think Oklahoma might have a tougher time in College Station than people might think. Oklahoma just barely beat Oklahoma State last week, and OU is just 1-5 lifetime in College Station. One of the up back takes it for Akron up to the 28 yard line. We talked earlier about J.D. Brookhart, the head coach for Akron. He's only been a coach for nine years, was a salesman prior to that. With more on him, here's Rob Stone. Yeah, he's starting to blend in his business background with his coaching duties. He's taken the recruiting process, broken it down to deliverables, cost requirements, and how best to market it. He told me of a story before the game when he was at the University of Pittsburgh where he gave a highly touted recruit a written proposal on why his school was best for him. Also, this is interesting, guys. Starting this offseason, he's going to have all of his coaches take a sales training course because, after all, recruiting is basically selling your school. And... He uses the, the basic tenets of selling. You don't tell people what they need. You find out what their needs are, and then you meet it. And he is lifting the Akron program to meet the needs of recruits. Rockhart did an excellent job running the offense for Walt Harris at Pittsburgh. Spent seven years at Pitt before taking over at Akron. We're seeing some great play out of the quarterbacks tonight. Hill for Marshall and Fry for Akron as Fry finds Hickson for about a 12-yard completion in the first down. Well, the reason Fry's here is because Brookhart did a great sales job on him. Fry wanted to come out possibly as a junior last year to the NFL, found out he'd be about a fourth-round draft pick. That would be around a $200,000 signing bonus. And Brookhart told him, if you stay with my system for a year, it's an NFL system, you will learn things the scouts want you to know, you, your stock will rise. From the Akron 45, Jarrell Ringer, the backup tailback, gets creamed at the 48-yard line by Chris Royal. Got about eight yards, but he just got pasted. Go back to Rob. Well, the NFL has taken its draft research to new levels lately. You know, the Wonderlick test, all the interviews they have with the players. So why not college football and its recruiting? J.D. Brookhart says the same thing. In fact, he's partnering with the CEO of a Boston company trying to develop a psychological-like aptitude and attitude assessment for recruits. I'll have more on that after this play. All right, second and three, Rob. It'll be Ringer again. And he finds a hole. 
and finds the 43 yard line which is good enough for the first down Roger Garrett on the stop Rob uh, he's working with John McMahon a CEO of a Boston company and a sports psychologist on the project which is really in its infant stage right now project working on kind of developing some open-ended questions that are both valid and reliable during an interview process and also having a multiple choice like questionnaire so you can try and find out more about a player's personality his durability his character things like that that's hard to measure with a stopwatch and game film well, good stuff Rob first down of the Marshall 43 yard line and Fry who has a rushing touchdown already in this game gets a great block from Ringer the tailback and gets nine yards around the edge well Ringer number 40 throws an absolutely terrific block this is a pass run option and now there he is right there he pulls it down, Fry does. The block is made, and that is just a, a spectacular combination. Ringer, a junior from Dayton, Ohio, was number one on the depth chart entering the year. That's because they didn't know about Brett Biggs, who was a junior college transfer. And uh, Biggs has become the top tailback, but Ringer's still pretty good. Nice move there to pick up the first down of the 32. Roberto Terrell on the stop. JT Rember assisting on the tackle. Well, one of the things on that psychological test they want to know is how likely is this player to be accountable, coachable, wanting to learn. And the more like Charlie Fry a recruit is, the better. After five days of this coaching staff being here, they finally made a key to the office for Fry because he was here when they arrived, and he was still here after they had left to study. Brookhart says that Fry's best attribute is his intangibles. Film study and the like as he finds Hickson on a flanker screen to the 20 yard line and he gets just slammed to the turf by Marcus Hairston. There's some popping going on down in that football field. There's some popping and there's some precision going on. Marshall finally got their offense uncorked. They took a short field down to score a touchdown and Fry now is answering. Hickson, a defensive back last year. They moved him over to wide receiver because they were so depleted to graduation, and, and he's fit right in. He was a wide receiver in high school, and he's just like a fish going back home to the water, being back on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, he led the team in tackles last year. It's a safety. Now he leads the team in receiving. Well, Marshall's coaches were very impressed with that move. They wondered how on earth on a defense that that ranked extremely low do you take your leading tackler and move him to the offensive side of the ball. But he has responded very well and it's Charlie Fry that really made the coaches aware of how good Dixon was as a receiver because he threw the ball to him early in his career before he moved to defense. Well, Charlie Fry throwing the ball on the move finding Hickson again buying time with his feet finding the open receivers and then when it's time to run the called play he's got enough speed to break it out and so far he's got the only touchdown for the Akron Zips so far. A lot of people comparing him to Ben Roethlisberger and we saw him run like Roethlisberger on that touchdown we've seen him make throws on the run we've seen the deep pass fifth all time in total yards in the Mac coming into this game. And he can move up with the rest of this season. He can very well move up into number two behind Leftwich. Biggs back into the game, trying to bounce to the outside, taken down to the 18 yard line for a gain of two or three by Keys. And Biggs is a great story. Junior college transfer from Fort Scott Community College. The only reason he's here is because his head coach at Fort Scott is now the running backs coach, Kevin Verdugo. And, and they didn't really know if they wanted Biggs. He was so small, they didn't know that he'd be durable enough. But then they asked themselves, can I hand, can I hand this off against Penn State to this guy? Will he be accountable? And they said yes. On second and seven, Fry fakes it to Biggs. And he gets cut down to the 15-yard line by Keyes. After a three-yard pickup, it'll bring up a third down and short. Well, they looked at the tape of Biggs. They watched the film. They said, you know, we're not, we're not going to take this kid. Then they went out to practice, and they looked at the running backs they had, and they said, these guys are not accountable. We can't see ourselves handing the football to any of these other players against Penn State. We know that Biggs will at least 
not turn it over. That's right. Fumbles, but it also goes beyond carrying the ball. It goes to blitz pickup. It goes to blocking, and they knew they could trust Biggs. And apparently, they trust him on third down and four. And so it was a fake, and then Fry is taken down at the 20. Lost about four or five yards, and what speed. Goddard just chases down Fry. Another sack for the nation's leader, Jonathan Goddard. He's been relatively quiet today, but that was a huge play because that stops them on what was a momentum drive heading into a potential touchdown, forces them into a field goal attempt. Jason Swiger will attempt a 36-yard field goal. Second team all Mac last year, former walk-on, and the 25-year-old hits the upright, no good. Swiger's attempt from 36 yards is no good. Fourth miss in 10 attempts this year by Swiger. And this is huge. The momentum that was Akron's going into the end of this second quarter turns into absolutely zero points. Well, I'd see you try to do that again. That's, that's a pure accident. Didn't look like a very good hold, though. Weren't able to get the ball down, and that uh, messed up Swiger's rhythm. Don't forget, ESPN2 halftime report coming up next. Marshall leading Akron 14-7, just over three minutes to play. Marshall quarterback Stan Hill is having a terrific half, and you could make the argument that he's outplaying Charlie Fry, the Akron quarterback, in this game so far. Earl Charles picks up seven yards on the carry. Jay Rohr makes the tackle. Watch this hole open up. Again, the Marshall offensive line doing a terrific job. This time, it wasn't a blitz. They were laying back, expecting a first down pass, and the offensive line took advantage. Marshall's won six of the last seven MAC East titles. No bowl game last year. Finished second in the division at six and two. They lead the East this year at five and zero, oh, and they control their own destiny. If they win out, they'll go to the MAC championship game and be assured, most likely, a bowl berth. Here's Charles getting into the secondary, and finally twirled the turf at the 45. But that's an 18-yard run. Charles again on the run for Marshall. Down by Henry after We're at the Rubber Bowl in Akron. Marshall, winners of five in a row. Akron has won three straight. Dave Pash, Trevor Maddich, and Rob Stone. Akron wins tonight, day nine of 19 days of football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. There will be a three-way tie atop the Mid-American Conference East. That's important because only two teams from the MAC are assured bowl bids. One likely to come from the West, the other likely to come from the East. Right now, Marshall has a seven-point lead. And here's Bradshaw on a screen. He scored on this play earlier. He makes some nifty moves there to get back to the line of scrimmage. Wayne LaFall on the stop. Well, here are the standings. Marshall undefeated, but Akron right now controls their own destiny because they're four and one. If they beat Marshall, they will hold the tiebreaker should those two teams win out for the rest of the year. You look at the West, Northern Illinois all alone up on top. And again, Bowling Green playing terrific ball now, but Northern Illinois knocked off Bowling Green earlier in the season. They hold the tiebreaker. From the 45-yard line, Hill throws into traffic, and it's caught. He delivered that pass among three blue shirts and still got it to Josh Davis for a first down. Go back to the studio. Check in with Reese Davis. Reese, what do you got for us at halftime? All right, Dave, Trev, and Mark will be here. And when they join me, guys, we'll talk a little bit about Utah and how they might fare, not only the rest of the season, but given different situations. Hey, Trevor Maddich obviously is on the same page as us guys. He knows Utah's a great team, but he played in the SEC. What do you think? Three losses? Maybe four. If they're in the East, maybe they can beat Vandy, Kentucky, South Carolina. That's yeah. about it. But Alex oh, Smith is on. a Heisman Trophy hey, come come on. On. No, no, no. Dave, I'll set him straight. Don't worry. Those SEC teams. Those SEC teams do not want to face Utah. Utah beat them up this year. They beat them up? They would beat them up. I've been on the field with the Utes, and these guys are as big and powerful and mean as any team I've seen. They do have a nasty defense, but I don't know beating up SEC teams. Hill throwing and finding Charles out of the flat. And he's got the first down inside the 30 to the 27. 
Marshall trying to tack on at least three more before heading into the locker room. Well, that's one of the reasons I'd love to see Utah in a BCS Bowl. There's all the talk about how they would fare against these teams at the, the high end of the BCS conferences. And frankly, I think the starting lineups, I think Utah is a team that those guys do not want to face. There's a, there's a lot of risk there. Not because they're so tricky, but because they're so physical. Utah is guaranteed a spot in the BCS Bowl. It finishes in the top six in the BCS standings. Right now, the Utes are ranked sixth. But two teams jumped them this week. Cal and Wisconsin were behind them in last week's BCS stands. Hill going to the end zone, and it's nearly pulled in. Incomplete. Davis didn't hang on, but what a job by Stan Hill. Well, they Bates say, almost caught it. They say if you touch it, you can catch it. It comes down and hits him on the fingertips. The problem is right there, you lose sight of that ball. When it comes over your helmet, you lose it. Hill thought it was good. But no, he goes down into the, the cockroach position and he's got to run another play. Brad Bates nearly pulls that pass in from Stan Hill, who's having maybe his best half of the season. Been replaced a couple of times by backup quarterback Graham Gopner, but maybe not tonight the way he's going. Here he finds his tight end to the 19-yard line. Pulled in by Joe Dyfel and a timeout called by Marshall. Let's look at that play. He loses vision of the ball right here. Now it comes back into his vision. So he can't see it as it comes over the top of his helmet. Then he reacquires it with his eyes as it clears that brow of his helmet. And that's one of the reasons he couldn't hold on. Trev, we came in hyping Charlie Fry. And he has not been uh, bad tonight, but... Man, Stan Hill has been outstanding. That one interception was a pass that was knocked into the air at the line and intercepted by a D lineman. Well, this is the Stan Hill that, that Marshall knew he could be. Last year before he was injured against Tennessee, they said that he was as effective and as skilled as Chad Pennington, as Byron Leftwich. But after he got hurt, he has worked to get his way back, not just physically, but his confidence. And now we're starting to see that same Stan Hill from last year before the injury. Stan Hill says he's the healthiest right now that he's ever been in his Marshall career. And his offensive line is performing today better than it has in any game up until today. Third down and two. Hill with time going to the end zone. Another drop. This one by Davis. Bates dropped one earlier on this drive, and now it's Davis letting one slip through his mitts. How on earth do you explain that? This is the Max all-time reception leader. You go back in time. This one just happened. Drop. And this one happened before that. Another drop in the end zone. There's not much more Stan Hill can do. 35-yard field goal try by Ian O'Connor. But they've got to uh, reset the play clock. It was at uh, zero. 21 seconds remaining in the half. Marshall by seven. And you said it. Stan Hill is doing all that he can in this football game. 25-second clock. But either way, what, what a huge break for Akron. Mm-hmm. Huge break because now as they go into the half, they will be in striking distance whether or not this field goal is good. You know, Connor missed a 35 yarder earlier this season against Ohio State. They call this a 36 yard attempt. And he misses this one. Wow. Josh Davis knows that he could have had six points instead of zero, and Bates knows it too. And boy, that's the difference between going up by two touchdowns in the half. It's a good snap, good hold. He just pushed it left, wide left. Don't tell Bobby Bowden. I hope he wasn't watching that. Stan Hill with a terrific half for Marshall, but uh, only a seven-point lead for Bob Pruitt's team. And Fry is uh, just going to take a knee and end the half. 
So two missed field goals in the closing minutes here in the first half. One that hit the upright for Akron. And then one that missed the post altogether for Marshall. Charlie Fry, the lone touchdown for the Zips in the first half, a 31-yard rushing score. Stan Hill with a touchdown pass and a touchdown run by Earl Charles. Marshall by seven. Let's go to the studio and Reese Davis. All right, Dave, Trev, and Mark here. And, guys, we saw Marshall play earlier in the year, went down to Huntington, did the game against Miami, Ohio, and Jonathan Goddard. He's made his presence felt in the first half of this game. He's playing as well probably as any defensive lineman in the country. Well, you can't block him with one guy. I think that's the key about Jonathan Goddard. He's got the ability to get upfield and attack the quarterback. And not only that, he chases plays down from behind. He has the speed to do that. In my opinion, he's one of the top three defensive linemen in the country, Barnum. He's got to be an All-American. Do you like him better than David Pollock? Yes, I do. I, mean, I think those are the two guys. I mean, I like him is because when I look at him and David Pollock, the way that they play, I mean, I think very few players in college football play every single play. And when you're a defensive and a rush, player when you want to get a, a sack you have to play every play like you expect to get that sack because you never know when it opens up we talked about those scouts at the game for Charlie Fry don't miss the fact that Jonathan Goddard and Stan Hill know the fact that those guys are sitting up there watching Stan Hill 19 of 25 so far yeah. I'm telling you it's real you know what really impressed me about Goddard he's got a motor he never stops that yes. motor just continues to go on every play you can put him on special teams you could put him anywhere on the field he's going to excel he is ex punts. He does yeah everything. he has he's excelled so far for Marshall all season long thundering herd up by a touchdown at the break when we continue on the college game day halftime report we'll do a little hypothetical situation so you've been wondering how Utah would bear they were in a big conference. I wonder if Trevor Maddich has seen Auburn up close and personal. Walk out. Georgia. Utah. Or Tennessee. Go see and ain't Georgia. nothing like them nowhere. We'll take North you to West. the land of dreams. <laughs> ESPN puts the spotlight on the highlight with ESPN 25 The Book. Available now. At BASF, we don't make the snowboard, we make it stronger. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Only a moan faucet puts pause control right at your fingertips. It'll help you with those important tasks. Or not. Moan. Buy it for looks, buy it for life. Wallace is going to push it himself. Drives the lane. Takes it strong to the hole. This is shaping up to be a blowout. The number one rated NBA game that IGN calls the most complete hoop game on the market. Now with Next Movement Technology. ESPN NBA 2K5 from ESPN Video Games. It's going to be huge. Rated E for everyone. For more entertainment for your TV, you could try Comcast Digital Cable or a satellite dish. Both offer high-definition programming, but satellite can't give you local networks in high definition. And while the dish does offer digital video recorders, so does Comcast, but with no equipment to buy. You just can't get that with a satellite dish. HDTV DVR from Comcast Digital Cable. Save energy and money with John's Manville Fiberglass Insulation from Menards. It's all formaldehyde free and all on sale. Get a $45 rebate on every $150 purchase of John's Manville. Rebates are available up to $450, including Comfort Therm Insulation. It's poly wrapped for easier installation and less itch. Our 25 Comfort Therm for Addicts is $13.89 a roll. Insulate now and don't pay till summer. Only at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Doesn't get much better than this football every night on the family of networks, ESPN, ESPN2, or ABC. And on day nine, the thundering herd of Marshall trying to inch closer to return to that MAC championship game. They have a 14-7 lead over Charlie Fry and the Zips. 
Charlie Fry's put on a terrific show in the first half. Looking forward to seeing the second half as he matches wits with that Marshall defense. You guys ready to do a little speed rush here? Yeah, it's about time we bring that back. Let's bring it back, take on some of the topics in college football. Here's how it works. We'll put two minutes on the clock. We ask each guy a question. Each guy is granted one timeout, which he can rebut the other's point of view. I reserve the right as dictator of speed rush to stop the clock, call timeout if I want to, oh, or, a grant, commissioner now. or oh, grant yeah. additional commissioner timeouts if football. I see fit. Let's put two minutes on the clock right now and get started with Mark. Mark Washington head coaching job is going to be open. Who's the best fit there? Jeff Tedford at Cal, without a doubt. I think it's a slam dunk. He's a West Coast guy. Washington has everything he needs, a lot more money, facilities, and they will back him in the football program. Great pick, Mark. Next question goes to Trev. Trev, if Utah played in the SEC, how many losses would they have? I think Utah would be a terrific team in, in the SEC. I think they'd have three losses. I mean, I think it's a team that would be competitive week in and week out. They'd win some games they're not supposed to. They'd probably time lose out. some games they're not time supposed to. Time out. Good team. I'll, I'll, you'd be a very good quickly. team in the SEC with three losses. Because the I SEC is the best the conference in college losses. football. A very you good team in the SEC has one or two losses. You're going to a major bowl game. I'm just telling you, this team would be in a Capital One Bowl. This is a good football team, and they could compete. They just wouldn't win it. They couldn't. They don't have the depth. Let's wind the clock now. Responsible opposing views. Mark, this one's for you. Who's got the better chance in that jumble Big 12 North, Iowa State or Nebraska? It's got to be Nebraska. The black Absolutely. shirts are back. Bill Callahan's done a wonderful job there. They're finally accepting his coaching, and the program is settling <laughs> down. I like Nebraska. They'll be in the championship game. The Big 12. And Wald Harris is a terrific coach. <laughs> there are so many subplots when you two guys go into that. Marv Seiler, the ghost of Marv Seiler in Jack Price Stadium. Trev, what program's disappointed you? I think Ohio State. I mean, guys, look, it is a team that was top five in, in the nation in the preseason, maybe top ten. You know, had a terrific defense, special teams, and they have just fallen out. I mean, we knew their offense wasn't very good, but they can't run, they can't throw, and now the defense is a sip. Ohio State, a huge disappointment. The other side, Mark, what program surprised you? It's got to be UTEP. You look what Mike Price has done at UTEP. This is a program that's only won six games total in the last three years. They've won six games this year. They're on course to win eight or nine games. I think it's got to be Mike Price in his program at UTEP. Trev, what quarterback? A lot of guys very similar has separated himself from the Heisman pack among the Heisman contending Well, you mentioned quarterbacks. That's right. the whole story here. But I think it's Alex Smith. I mean, you look at all those guys out here. Here's a guy with 20 touchdowns, only two interceptions. He's got eight rushing touchdowns. He actually rushes for 50 yards a game. He brings another dimension. I'm telling you right now, I know it's the Mountain West. If I was picking a quarterback for the Heisman, I would pick Alex Smith. He's been the best quarterback so far this year in college football. I'm sorry. You know what? As In my role as commissioner, I'm going to grant Mayday an additional timeout because with facial expressions like that, you simply must rebut this if you feel this Did strongly. Forget about Jason White, Matt Liner, Aaron Rodgers, quarterback that you've been boasting about for the last month. All of a sudden, you're taking the guy out. I, I have that never plays boasted about other defense. quarterbacks, Mark. I've been on Adrian Peterson and Reggie Bush from day one, and don't start that. You haven't mentioned Aaron Rodgers last week? I mentioned him as a candidate. <laughs> oh, God. All right, six seconds left. Back back, I, will, back, back, back. I will say the numbers are pretty impressive, mate. I mean, you 20 touchdowns and two interceptions for Alex Smith. Maybe He's more got the highest quarterback rating. In a, in a decent conference. And he has been notified that he is among the Heisman Trophy aspirants. Yes. Well, he's, he's, he's he's a, you missed it. He said a decent conference. I heard what he said. Yeah, if, he, if he played it in a major a BCS conference, conference it's it would be more impressive. But okay. I'm saying that he's done an, an outstanding job, and I give him all the props. He, I just and he want to see him run that offense against Auburn's defense. Yes. Well, I just want to see what happens if a quarterback defense, runs that sort of that little option read, and then the defense is, and they come blow. You know, I, I, that's yeah, all I'm saying. Well, you won't, you probably won't see offense. them against Auburn. You might see them against West Virginia. The I, Fiesta Bowl, if things were to hold true yes. that way. That is speed rush. We are out of time on that clock. And, of course, it is Friday night, and a staple of our coverage is the Ford Freestyle Friday tailgate. Mississippi State and Alabama get together in Tuscaloosa on Saturday night. It is homecoming for Sylvester Croom. It's homecoming for a lot of guys, three guys, including Croom on the Mississippi State staff played at Alabama. Both of the Bulldog coordinators were once coordinators at Alabama. And oh, by the way, the Crimson Tide starting quarterback at one time was committed to Mississippi State. A lot of subplots going on in this game, but there is one constant when you go to the game in Tuscaloosa. Got to find a place to tailgate, and you must visit the land of dreams. Alex Flanagan, Ford Freestyle, Friday Tailgate. One. If you want a good tailgating spot here in Tuscaloosa, you have to show up early, 48 hours early. That's when RVs start lining up to get a spot here in this parking lot. But for this group behind me, 
showing up on Thursdays is amateur. The Bama RV family shows up here on Tuesdays. Now they've been doing it for 10 years and the group consists of lots of different personalities. There's a rocket scientist, a nuclear weapons specialist, a firefighter amongst these people. But I got wind that you guys are going to be cooking fajitas tomorrow, and I'm a little bit disappointed. So I took the liberty to hear of going to Dreamland Ribs. Now, when you come to Tuscaloosa, you stop at Dreamland, right, you guys? <laughs> All right, Dreamland has been around since 1958, and there are two things on the menu there. No slaw, no macaroni and cheese, -uh, none of that stuff. Just ribs and white bread. All right, so we've got the RVs, we've got the food. Now we just need a football game, right? Yeah. Saturday night, Sylvester Croom comes home to Alabama with his Mississippi State Bulldogs, and Alabama, the Crimson Tide, tries to become bowl eligible. Friday night tailgate, brought to you by the new Ford Freestyle. Let me tell you, the slogan at Dreamland is, ain't nothing like them nowhere. I mean, and there's not. Uh, no, You've let me not that. been to Swallow at the Hollow in Roswell, Can't Georgia. Can't touch it. I've been to Rendezvous in Memphis, Bullocks in Durham, North Had Carolina, all kinds. I've not been to Swallow at the Hollow. You can't touch Dreamland. Well, I'm telling you right now, Tops. Swallow at the Hollow is unbelievable. A little live I'm music sure it too. is. I'm we'll sure it is. Garfunkel. They nice. do not allow dancing at Dreamland. There's guys, a sign right guys, over the door that says so. as a former so. hog, I am a bit of a connoisseur of ribs. You've got to, you know, you've got to, you <laughs> like to try Dreamland because I haven't tried it yet, but I would love to try it and compare it with some of my you own. You know what I'm going to Send do? I, I'm, going to, I'm going to have Dreamland shipped to both of you. That's what I'm going to do. Outstanding. I'll do it this week. We'll, forward to it. we'll report back on the Ford Freestyle the Friday tailgate next week. Alan, why is it always about food with us? Every Friday night. Because we're hungry. They don't feed us. Maybe have some brats for traps. soon. how much smaller market College football Saturday prime time. Clemson and Miami Hurricanes trying to bounce back from that disappointing, heartbreaking loss against Carolina. That's available in ESPN HD. You'll get a chance to see a guy that Trev says has separated himself from the quarterback pack in the Heisman Trophy race. Alex Smith in Utah against the Rams of Sonny Lubick, 945 Eastern Time on ESPN2. It's our 19 days of football continuing. Here is a guy. First day draft choice, many believe. The NFL draft, Charlie Fry from Akron, have to try to rally his team in the second half. Yes, Marshall. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the 2005 Ford Mustang, built for the road ahead. the things you love about a car with the stuff you need from an SUV. The totally new Ford Freestyle. One vehicle. Endless possibilities. Ford. Built for the road ahead. Capital One. Mascot. True Love Challenge. Nothing like a day in the sun to see if Melissa's love for one of these mascots heats up. So who wants to put lotion on my back? Help Melissa choose by voting at CapitalOneBowl.com for the national mascot of the year. Tune in to the Capital One Bowl to see who wins. What's in your wallet? Astonishing. Extraordinary. It's awesome. It's becoming a brand new university. Five years ago, we promised we were going to reinvent the University of Akron. And we have kept that promise. Fun. Exciting. Amazing. And this is the year when it all comes together. It's wonderful. I'm really impressed. Wow. 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 It is a wow experience. You have to see it for yourself. It's so amazing. I couldn't agree more. Come and see what we built for you. Back on the College Game Day Halftime Report, and we're just getting started with plenty of football tonight. Later on, turn our attention to the Sun Belt. North Texas going down to Lafayette to take on Louisiana Lafayette and the Raging Cajuns. You know, most of the time, if you lose a running back or two or three or four, like Iowa has, it really puts a crimp in your offense. Not so for the mean green. Lost Patrick Combs, who led the nation in rushing last year, and they've replaced him with another sensational freshman. Dr. Jerry Punch and Jim Donham will have the call for us. 
It's about to come to a boil here in Lafayette, Louisiana, as we prepare to stir the pot for a Sun Belt Conference showdown featuring the mean green of North Texas and the raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette. Along with the coach, Jim Don, and I'm Jerry Punts. Glad to have you with us. And I know we've seen some sensational freshman running backs this year, coach, but tonight many will get their first glimpse of the young man who leads the nation in rushing, Jamario Thomas. Well, everybody's heard a lot about uh, Hart and Peterson, but we're going to see Jamario Thomas tonight, a back that's taken over the rushing lead in the nation. He's got great power and strength, and he really runs well in the open field. Daryl Dickey's counting on a big game for him tonight to take the pressure off Hall in his passing game. And if we watch this video, you can see the the kind of explosive strength he shows in the open field, and he's going to go against a tough defense tonight. And across the field, Louisiana Lafayette leads the conference in scoring offense, and it all starts with their sophomore quarterback, Jerry Babb. I've had a chance to watch Jerry Babb in person. He's a very athletic kid. He knows how to make good decisions, and he'll tuck that ball down when he has to, but he also can throw it down the field. Coach Bustle's going to look for him to throw the ball on the perimeter tonight with these move-type passes, and I really think his accuracy is going to be the, the difference for our team moving the football. Well, they have a history of turning out talented quarterbacks here like this one. It led the Carolina Panthers to Super Bowl 38 a year ago. Well, Reese, when you come here to 10 o'clock tonight, I guarantee you this place will be rocking when you come knocking. We're looking forward to it, Doc. I can't wait to get a good look at Jamario Thomas. I mentioned Bab as well. Earl Charles giving the Zips a good look. When we come back, we'll tell you about a very short tenure for a baseball manager. If a lazy moment turns into the right moment, will you be ready? Get to know Cialis, the first tablet for erectile dysfunction that gives you up to 36 hours to choose the moment that's right for you and your partner. Cialis goes to work fast and can work for up to 36 hours. Cialis is not for everyone. If you take nitrates for chest pain or certain alpha blockers for prostate problems or high blood pressure, do not take Cialis. Such combinations could cause a sudden unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. The most common side effects were headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. Erections lasting longer than four hours, though rare, require immediate medical help. Discuss your health status with your doctor to ensure Cialis is right for you and you are healthy enough for sexual activity. Ask your doctor if a free sample of prescription Cialis is right for you. 36-hour Cialis. When the moment is right, Will you be ready? The drive is on for the 2004 MAC Football Championship game. Thursday, December 2nd at Detroit's Ford Field, home of the Detroit Lions and Super Bowl 40. Get ready for some MAC Motor City mayhem as the beasts of the East meet the best in the West at a neutral site for the first time to decide the league title. Get your tickets now at the Ford Field box office or through Ticketmaster. The 2004 MAC Football Championship. It's a whole new ball game. Our employees are trained, experienced, and love to work on cars. Training is a constant focus at Jiffy Lube. We work very hard on it every day. More cars are serviced at Jiffy Lube every day in Chicago than at any, any other quick lube or oil change facility. The longevity that we develop over the years with our employees really give the customers a great deal of confidence when they see very familiar faces as they come through. We're close by, the facilities are well staffed, they're neat and clean, and we're ready to service the motoring public's need. Time for your brightest smile in just one hour with Bright Smile. That's amazing. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Call today for your Bright Smile. Call right away and you'll save an extra $75. So call now for your brightest smile. My teeth are completely white. This were the regular season in baseball, Wally Backman wouldn't have made it one time through his pitching rotation. The Arizona Diamondbacks fire Backman after just four days on the job. Backman, it was discovered, had some issues in his past, a couple of arrests and some financial problems that led the Diamondbacks to do a thorough background check, something they had not done when they hired him. And the results of that investigation, according to the team, led them to dismiss the former Mets player, Bob Melvin, who managed Seattle last year and lost 99 games, is the new Diamondbacks manager instead. 
Got plenty of football coming your way on Saturday, including homecoming for Sylvester Croom. Mississippi State trying to make it three in a row in SEC play. Sly Croom goes back home to take on the Crimson Tide. 6.30 Eastern time. Second half's coming. ESPN2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the totally new Ford Freestyle. Built for the road ahead. Katie was sure of her cholesterol plan. She took medication, she ate right and ran. Yet it wasn't enough to get bad cholesterol low. What's this? I'm still here in the land of no. Switch to Crestor, her doctor said. You're not to blame. All cholesterol drugs simply aren't the same. When Crestor performed in a head-to-head -head test, its lowering effect was clearly the best. Crestor's proven effective, that's well understood. Would you like to try it? Why, yes. Yes, I would. Ask your doctor about Crestor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of serious side effects. Since Katie switched to Crestor, her cholesterol's much less. With Crestor and diet, it's the land of success. Get your free trial today, and you just might declare, I'm a Crestor success. Now you're getting somewhere. steal a line from our resident comedian and sideline reporter Rob Stone but to Charlie Fry right now being outplayed perhaps by Marshall quarterback Stan Hill Fry did have a, an 80 yard touchdown pass that was dropped but still numbers wouldn't be as good as Hill and these are just two of the many fine quarterbacks that this great quarterback conference has sent to the NFL and one of the reasons they said so many quarterbacks there so prepared is that they they have a lot of time to play in NFL offenses in the Mac these quarterbacks that we see were in styles of offense that required them to make the reads that their NFL teams want them to make and they played most of them three or four years in college so when they got to the NFL they had a lot of time reading those defenses. Ben Roethlisberger from Miami of Ohio, Chad Pennington, Byron Lefwich from Marshall. Maybe Stan Hill from Marshall in the NFL. Chove Alberts was saying at halftime, hey, if you're a scout and there are about 20 of them at this game, you got to be pleased with what you've seen out of Hill. He's a big guy, 6'3", 215 pounds. So he's got the size. We've seen the arm strength. And we've seen the accuracy tonight out of Hill. Short kick. It'll be taken by Bradshaw. He loses it. And he just gets it back before he's belted by Dante Cloud. So Marshall left to start shy of its 15-yard line. Well, Charlie Fry, Trev, we knew coming into the game, was a pretty special quarterback. We've seen his ability to move out of the pocket and throw the, and throw the football, drop back and throw the football. But how about Stan Hill and the job that he did in that first half for Marshall? Yeah, Stan Hill, with an offensive line that was suspect, was able to drop back and deliver the ball accurately when he had time. But even when he didn't, he was able to throw the ball just prior to getting smashed by the blitz. Hill was in the shotgun. Now he runs up to change the play and drops back into the gun. And it's a handoff. Earl Charles off the right side for about two or three. Well, earlier, Rob Stone asked many scouts what they thought of Charlie Fry. Now he's going to tell us what they think of Stan Hill, Rob. Yeah, I spoke with a couple at halftime, and guess what? They agree with Trev Alberts. It's a first. Trev, smile in the studio. Be happy. They agree with what you're saying. One thing they said about Stan Hill is tonight he has solidified himself as a legitimate draft pick, probably sixth or seventh round. Like his arm, he's not as accurate as a left which or a Pennington. Needs to handle pressure in his face better, but they're really impressed with the accuracy on those deep end routes he's shown tonight. 
It's Josh Davis on a catch and getting a first down near the 30-yard line. Well, I think the combine will be important, important for Stan Hill when all the, the potential draftees will show up for a three-day turnout. It's sort of a tryout camp for the NFL scouts, and they'll be able to put him through controlled drills. They'll be able to see him drop back and make all the throws. They'll be able to see his arm strength under controlled circumstances, and that will help him. On the 30, leads Charles too much, and it's incomplete. Well, Hill is one of four brothers who've played college sports. Two of his brothers played football at Ole Miss. His other brother played baseball at Ole Miss. Hill decided to leave Oxford, Mississippi, his hometown, and play for Bob Pruitt and Marshall. Well, there was a quarterback at Ole Miss by the name of Eli Manning, and so he decided to come up to Marshall. He liked Chad Pennington in the offense here. Hill played through injuries most of last year and most of this year. But he's healthy now. And there was a mistake as maybe Dyfel ran the wrong route, the tight end there. That pass was about five yards too wide of the tight end. So it's third down and ten. Jay Rohr, the linebacker, number 35, came all the way around the left side and drilled it in the back as he delivered that ball. Jay Rohr, an outstanding run plugger. You don't expect him to have the speed to get all the way around the edge when he blitzes. Normally, he blitzes up the middle, but that time, he showed some quicks. Marshall, two for six on third down. You gotta get just past the 40-yard line to move the chance. Three-man rush, and Hill steps and delivers. And it's caught, and on the run is Bates, down the sideline. And he finally steps out at the 43-yard line. We've hyped Josh Davis tonight, but Brad Bates has been equally good, a 27-yard catch. He had a drop earlier, but otherwise has been terrific. And what a move to break two tackles. Bates number 83 to the right of your screen, makes this catch and then ducks inside, and out he goes. Two guys miss him, and then he outruns two more for the sideline, and that's the difference, Dave, between having to punt on fourth down and having a first down in your opponent's territory. Seven catches already for Bates, 30 on the year, a handful of touchdowns. A little bit smaller than Josh Davis at 5'11", 175 pounds, but pretty good. And here is Hill going deep. An excellent coverage downfield. He was trying for Davis. Deontay Henry had terrific coverage on the corner. The speed of the secondary of Akron was something also in, in question. But Henry this time runs with Josh Davis, the max all-time leading receiver as of today. Stride for stride, there's nowhere for that ball to drop and be complete. Henry, a sophomore from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Davis has been hobbled tonight. He still played pretty well. Set the uh, MAC record, as Trev mentioned, for catches in a career. But uh, he's playing hurt right now as he oh! is drilled as he gets rid of it incomplete across the middle. And he gets up a little more slowly every time. That's Cam Yao, number 45. And this time he does glitch right straight up the middle. He'll come right through there. And Hill is looking downfield like he should, but man, oh man, is that a shot. You can see the brace on his left knee. That's his injured knee. He'll hit him high, didn't affect that. But every shot, he gets up slow. I'm sorry, Yao hit Hill high. And Hill got up slowly. Third down and 10. Finds Bates again, very close to the first down of the 29. Wrapped up and spun to the turf by Henry, but a 14-yard pickup, and it will be enough to move the chains. Reggie corner number 29, Akron's best cover corner, but Bates comes up, stops, and gets the separation by stopping and turning. That ball was in the air before Bates turned. Corner on the stop, eighth catch of the night for Bates. First place on the line in the MAC East. Marshall is undefeated 
in divisional play and conference play. As this one is caught by Davis, and he rams forward to about the 20. Gain of eight yards on the play. Shevin Pace on the stop. Marshall's 5-0 and in the conference. Akron is 4-1. and Miami of Ohio is 5-1. and So if Marshall wins, certainly helps its cause in an effort to get back to the MAC title game, something that Bob Pruitt's team did not do last year. They missed a bowl game last year. Only two teams from the MAC are assured bowl bids. So you really have to win your division to have a chance. Horace Marshall will lead the back after the season and go to Conference USA next year as Charles picks up the first down running ahead to about the 16-yard line. Well, that's one of the reasons that they're going to Conference USA. They're leaving two bowl tie-ins with with the Mac and they're moving the five bowl tie-ins with Conference USA and you see how they've dominated the Mac. Five Mac championships, six East Division titles, six bowl appearances, but Last year, not a bowl appearance, even though they were bowl eligible and even though they're one of the most exciting teams in America because there were only two tie-ins in their conference. They've made this league. There's no question they've made the map what it is today. From the 15-yard line, Hill with time, and he fires complete, and it's a touchdown! Brad Bates with his ninth catch of the night. And a touchdown to make it a 13 point lead. 15 yard touchdown completion. Head of Bates. Ball's coming right at you, number eight. Bates will come, come into your screen. He drills the ball. Great throw by Hill. And one of the reasons, oh, the stretch for the touchdown. One of the reasons that's available. Akron's defense is all over Josh Davis, the max leading receiver, and that's leaving a lot of space for Bates underneath. That was an 86-yard drive. Extra point is good. Two minutes and 58 seconds, 11 play, 86 yards. Brad Bates with a sixth touchdown catch of the season. Marshall by 14. Can inspiration make the simple act of driving around extraordinary? Yes. Can substance and style blend seamlessly together? Clearly. And can the car of your dreams be an affordable reality? Absolutely. The 150 mile per hour performance tested Chrysler Crossfire. Lease one for only $2.99 a month if you're a well qualified lessee. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Taco Bell's Zesty Chicken Border Bowl is made right when you order it, so it tastes even better. Grilled all-white meat chicken, hot steaming rice, cool crisp lettuce, and Fiesta Salsa. For a freshly prepared meal, think outside the bun. In the mood for something grilled? Stouffer's makes it easy with their succulent new grilled chicken entrees. A grilled herb rub chicken breast seared over an open flame to seal in its juices and served with tender linguine and a medley of crisp vegetables tossed in a light tomato herb sauce. As for your grill, put it on ice. Stouffer's new grilled herb chicken, one of four new grilled chicken entrees from Stouffer's. Oh, Those who never quit. The battery that never quits. Energizer. Keep going. If you have great credit, shouldn't you get a better rate on your home equity line? At eLoan, you do. We process your loan differently, online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender fees. Apply today at eLoan.com. Got athlete's foot? Think fast. Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. If you use Tenactin or Lotrimin AF, you'll be treating for four long weeks. But one week with Lamisil AT keeps you athlete's foot free for three months. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot. 296 yards passing for Stan Hill. Couple of touchdowns. Meanwhile, Charlie Fry, who has a rushing touchdown, not having a great night passing, but he's going to have to get going now with his team down two touchdowns. That's one of the things the pro scouts will want to see from him today. The pressure is now on. The defense of Marshall will be coming. How's he going to respond? O'Connor levels this one. Akron 
will start at the 20. Make it easy. Fry has not had the benefit of a good running game. Only 129 yards total offense for Akron. 15 yards for Brett Biggs, the starting running back who coming into tonight was averaging 170 yards rushing over the last three games. So the lack of a running game has hurt Fry. It has, and the first series they took it down. Everything worked like clockwork, scored a touchdown. Ever since then, Marshall has had him shut down. They have that 129 total yards, 31 were on that touchdown run by Fry. Those ends, Goddard and Martin have put some pressure on Fry. Here they roll him out. And it's caught by Dennis Bash, the tight end, and he's still going. Out to the 36-yard line, Rembert on the stop. Dennis Bash, the younger brother of Fullback Dan Bash, the Bash brothers. No, it's not Conseco and McGuire. But equally good for Akron. Well, you know, if, if you're growing up and the Bash brothers are coming after you, you know that you don't want to mess with them. And they could be itty bitty and skinny if they're the Bash brothers, stay away. They're both about 250 pounds. First down for the 36. Quick throw to Hickson. And he is dumped. Out of play at the 41-yard line. Chris Royal on the stop. Right, they can talk about the quick throw. Look at what Akron has done on those first two plays. They roll out Charlie Fry away from the pass rush, and they dump it off short to Bash. And then on this one, it's a quick throw right to the line of scrimmage to allow Dixon to run. They're keeping the play short so that pass rush can't hit him. First year for J.D. Brookhart at Akron coming over from Pitt, where he was there for seven years, offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach. Here Fry is going deep, and Hickson was well covered on the far sideline by Willie Smith. Well, they're still doubling up on Goddard. If you look right here, take a look at how many guys. You've got 71, the right tackle, Briscoeyak. He goes into his legs, and then the guard, Mike Picciarillo, comes out and gets a shot at him as well. Can't get to the quarterback. Your corners are a lot better, Trev, when you get good pressure up front, aren't they? Yeah, and your corners are better when some of the guys that would come out into pass coverage are chipping on those defensive ends, and they're not able to flood the zones. Marshall, number one in the country in third down defense. On Akron's touchdown drive, they completed a couple third down and five. Oh. And here Goddard just slams down the quarterback fry. Curtis Keyes got there first, but then Goddard cleaned him up. Well, this is what happens when you focus on the defensive ends. You don't have eyeballs out to the corner. Curtis Keyes comes from the offensive left, and boy, Fry is limping. He got drilled. All right, here's Goddard. He gets in on the end of it, but Keyes is the one that throws the, the tackle that has Fry limping. Bill Sullivan to boot it away. And it's a fake. But Akron is going to be short at the 43-yard line. Marshall shuts it down. Mark Tetzel, the up man, took it as J.D. Brookhart gambles, but... Bob Pruitt's team was not fooled. They were ready for it. Well, you know, you, you can't fault Brookhart for being aggressive there. His offense had not been going well. His defense was starting to get shredded by Stan Hill, and he was trying to get something going. I don't fault him for that. Take a look at the right of your screen. Number 25, Curtis Keyes, is going to flash in there way from out there. And the offensive line doesn't even see him because they're so focused in on Goddard and Jameis Martin. Well, Akron's defense has not played well the last couple of drives, especially defending the pass. And here's Bradshaw making some nifty moves to the 40-yard line. That's a two-yard game, but it's as pretty a two-yard game as you'll see. DeAndre Earl on the stop. As they look at uh, the left leg of Fry. This, Second down and eight. This is not good on a variety of levels. For Akron, they can't move the ball at all without Fry. Their backup quarterback situation is not strong. They will have to change the game plan and become very conservative if Fry can't go in there. There's Ferguson, redshirt freshman. They also have Jabari Arthur, a wide receiver who dropped a sure touchdown earlier in the game. 
who can play quarterback as well. Hill going deep. Another touchdown for Marshall. This time it's Josh Davis. Still has pass complete to Josh Davis. Good for a 40-yard touchdown for Marshall. Davis and Bates Davis together and are killing Akron. They have nine catches apiece. Each of them have a touchdown. Attention, please. The, the offensive line Terrell. gives great protection, and then Davis comes in and goes inside. There's no safety support whatsoever, and that is why he's able to get so wide open. 280 career catches now for Josh Davis, most ever in the MAC, and he's 20 shy with probably three to four games to go for Marshall of breaking the NCAA record. 28 to seven Marshall. Two plays after the failed fake punt. Marshall scores to go up 21. Another great night for Josh Davis and Stan Hill. Three touchdown passes for Hill. Charlie Fry struggling for Akron. I'll reach over and click up that toggle. The only place in the world where everything goes my way. Can inspiration replace the typical small car with something that lives a little larger? More space. More function. More sizzle. America's best small car alternative just got a little better. The Chrysler PT Cruiser, now starting at just $13,995. Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. Two lattes. Watch this. Here you go. Thank you. You ready? Yeah. You check her. Check now. Is it there yet? Um, no, nothing. No? See your check card transactions instantly with secure oh. Oh. online banking. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. 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 Instant, huh? Here, Link. Hey, you know what? Can you, can you make it do that again and get me a brownie? Yeah. Bank of America. Thanks. Higher standards. Want to get rid of the wires? Get a wireless laptop with technology designed for lightweight. Make sure it has Intel Centrino mobile technology built in. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. And Remington Titanium Shavers, sponsors of the ESPN Video Games Titanium Bowl 2K5. Back in Akron, Dave Pash with Trevor Maddich. We're at the Rubber Bowl about seven miles from University of Akron campus. Marshall trying to get back to a bowl game after missing the postseason last year. Leads Akron 28-7. Heard trying for its sixth straight win. They started the year 0-3, but lost to, at the time, two top 10 teams, Ohio State and Georgia. They've been pretty darn good ever since. As uh, O'Connor plants it five yards deep in the end zone, and Hickson takes the knee. Last time Akron had the ball, Charlie Fry got hurt. Far right of your screen, Curtis Keyes. He's not even there yet. Now he shows up way outside the protection zone. And look at him, hit him right smack on the thigh pad. Goddard cleaned him up after Keyes had the hit. Rob Stone has more on the injury to Fry, who is going to go back in the game. Rob. Yeah, Trevor, you got it. It was not his left knee as originally feared. feared. They're calling it a left quad bruise. Best thing you can do right now is to keep him loose. They're going to have him on the bike when he's not out on the field. It's going to be like your old PE teacher used to tell you. Go walk it off, kid. He's got to stay in the game. Akron needs this one. Again, with only two bowl bids going to MAC teams as bigs. Is able to break a couple of tackles. Finally smothered at the 28-yard line. Remember, though, Akron, if it loses this game, the chances are uh, very poor for Akron to win the division. And you almost have to win your division to get a bowl bid in the back because only two teams get bowl berths, GMAC and Motor City Bowl. That's right, and they've won their last three games to put themselves at 4-1 and one in the MAC. They control their destiny, but right now they've got to get it rolling.
He'll try to establish a running game, and Goddard showing that he can play to run, too. He's the nation's leader in sacks, but he's holding up against the run very well at 245 pounds. Well, he's 245, but he's only about six feet tall, maybe a little bit less. So he's got tremendous leverage. He reminds of Dwight Freeney, plays defensive end for the Indianapolis Colts, who's listed at 6'1", about 260, but he's really probably about six feet tall. And Goddard looks to him for inspiration as he seeks to move to the next level. Third down and one at the 29-yard line, and Fry has to throw. And he's got a completion. As Bash is up past the 40 to the 42, Willie Smith on the tackle. There's the other Bash brother, Dan. Dennis caught one earlier. His older brother, Dan, gets a reception here, about 15 yards at a first down. Well, J.D. Brookhart describes this offense as distributing five receivers, and the quarterback has to know which one to go to upon reading the defense. That time, he wanted to go farther down the field, but Fry saw that the middle of the field was covered. He checked all the way down to his fullback. From the Akron 43, they go three wide. Fry with time, and he nearly throws an interception. The pocket collapsed, and he almost threw it to the nation's leader in interceptions. And Ronaldo Williams was also there. Chris Royal was in the area as well, but Williams should have picked it off. You talk about the pocket collapsing. Jamal Weiss, defensive tackle number 96, just drove his man back. Take a look at 96. Look at the power that he's got as he's working against the left guard, and that it happens because there's no help inside. Why? Because Goddard is drawing the attention. You can have great pass rushers on the outside, but when you have that push from the inside, that makes those guys a heck of a lot better. Here's an option pitch that goes awry. Better get out of bounds for Akron's sake, and it does. So Akron will keep possession, but they lose 11 yards of the play. You know what that is, Davis? That is absolute desperation. Play calling on the part of J.D. Brookhart. They can't get a running game going, so they pull an option out in the West Coast offense with a pocket passer who just got a thigh bruise. I mean, that's just desperation to try to get something going. Well, they uh, showed how desperate they were on their previous drive, and they tried a fake punt. And uh, given the fact that Akron just cannot stop the passing game of uh, Marshall, Maybe that wasn't such a, a bad idea. They needed to do something, liven things up, whether on special teams or on offense. Fry on third down and 19, being chased. And as he buys time, he goes deep, and it's incomplete. Trying for Montgomery, threw into a crowd, and Akron will punt it away. Got to be impressed with Marshall's defense. And... The front four for the Thundering Herd have been very good, especially Goddard. And look at how they're trying to block Goddard. He's been chasing the quarterback all over creation. He's been double teamed. He's been chipped. He's been stopping the run. And yet, he's still effective. Now, because he's so effective, it allows the other defenders to work on man blocking. Sullivan gets it away. Span at the 20. Lost it. Got it back, though, at the 22. The Akron coaches say that Goddard has the best get-off they've seen. Explain what that means, Trev. As an offensive lineman, what that means is this. If a defensive lineman gets off the ball super quick, it breaks down the footwork of the offensive lineman. It makes him turn his shoulders. It makes him cross his feet. So even though Goddard is small, he's able to, to use his feet and his hands to break everything down. And when you look at what's happening here in the improvement of this Marshall defense, as good as they were at the beginning, for goodness sake, they are absolutely crushing Akron's offense. They've got a 21-point lead as they go to work again on offense from their 22. And they're going to the air. Caught on the far side, and Davis is finally wrestled out of play at the 38-yard line. Shevin Pace on the stop. 16-yard gain for Davis, and now it's 10 catches. Well, you got receiver, corner, and nobody back here. And so Hill sees that, just a quick throw, and all of a sudden it's one-on-one. -on -one. You're a guy against their guy. Distribute the ball. 
Marshall coaches say Davis is better than Darius Watts, who is a second-round pick of the Denver Broncos. Davis, 6'1", 190-pound receiver. Hey. Charles takes this one out to the 43-yard line. And if you ask the Denver Broncos, they think they got a steal getting Watts in the second round. Yeah. They think now seeing him that he's actually a first-round talent. Saying that Josh Davis is even better than that, seeing that Josh Davis broke his all-time MAC receiving receptions record tonight says a lot for Josh Davis. Bob Pruitt has had 12 players drafted since he took over as coach. He's in his ninth year, highest winning percentage among active Division I coaches. It helps when you have great players, and Stan Hill is playing great tonight, the Marshall quarterback. Here's an inside running play as Charles oh, is stopped at the 42 yard game. line by John Fuller. Ben Roethlisberger, first round pick last year, 5 0 as a starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jason Babin out of Western Michigan, picked by the Texans. There's Darius Watts, who's now with Denver. Michael, Mike, Michael Turner is just a bruiser, super fast at running back. And Josh Harris from Bowling Green, great quarterback, good at distributing the ball, good on his feet. And now we're looking at Charlie Fry, who is, by all accounts, the next great Mac quarterback with a shot to play at the next level. He has struggled tonight, but uh, as the Marshall coaches told us in comparing him to Roethlisberger, as Guillory hurdles a defender and takes it to the 48, the Marshall coaches said in comparing Charlie Fry to Ben Roethlisberger, that Roethlisberger had a much better supporting cast. That Fry does not have the players around him that Roethlisberger had at Miami of Ohio. First attempt, down, 47. About six minutes to play in the third quarter from the 47-yard line of Akron. Akron's got to find a way to get some pressure on Stan Hill. The much maligned Marshall offensive line has been pretty good tonight. Hill again with time, and it's another catch across the middle for Davis, and look at him go inside the 30. 11th grab for Davis. He came into tonight 29 catches shy of tying the NCAA record for most catches in a career. And Davis might get it by the end of the game. He's got 11 catches in this one. Well, the way it's going now, and there's no way in the world Akron's secondary will be able to stop this if they don't get pressure. In the first half, early they did. But in the second half, they are not. 378 yards. That's because the offensive line has been giving him the time. Most of those yards, Davis 82. And Bates, number 83. Here's Bradshaw, the true freshman, sprinting through the hole and taking it to the 23. Look at that. 378 <laughs> passing yards to 53. But hey, Marshall hasn't had to run the ball. Well, and also, Akron's goal was to stop the run. They've had eight men up a lot to stop and they've succeeded at stopping the run the problem is they haven't translated that presence at the line into a pass rush Akron stopped the run earlier in the game but then Stan Hill just dropped back through the football and uh, did not receive any pressure and there should have been a touchdown as uh, Davis had it in his mitts Deontay Henry may have gotten a hand in there to break it up we're at the Rubber Bowl in Akron. Marshall trying to stretch its winning streak to six games to get back to a bowl game after missing one last year. They pass Trevor Maddich, Rob Stone. About halfway home, 19 days of football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. First place in the MAC East on the line. Marshall controls its own destiny. If it wins out, it'll go to the MAC championship game and likely a bowl game after missing the postseason in 2003. Hill. Looking for Davis again. Another drop. Why can't these guys hang out of the football? Well, that's the second pass touchdown Davis pass drop by Davis line today. Get him right in the hands. And Hill has got to be so frustrated. On the stat sheet, he should have a lot more than he does. He just wants the win. But look, it hits him in the hands. Whoa, whoa, wait. He bobbled it and hit him in the face mask. And that's what caused it to bounce forward and out of reach. 39-yard field goal try. O'Connor missed from 35 in the first half. Almost had that one blocked. And misses again. Well, the corners for Akron cannot stay with Josh Davis and Brad Bates. 
Stan Hill still has to throw it well. He is. And uh, if not for drops, this game would be about 42 to 7. And that red triangle on his forehead is not where the pad from his helmet is, it's where it isn't. It makes a triangle there, it forces all the blood into that area. That's why it's red. I know you were wondering why that was red. Trev, man. Well, where did you learn that? Not at BYU, I don't well, I presume. Had, I had quite an amazing mosaic on my head when I took my hat off. <laughs> Substitution infraction on the offense. Penalties decline. Field goals no good. First down. I've always wondered where that red mark on the helmet comes from. Now we know, folks. Now we know. We also know that Stan Hill is a pretty good quarterback, and Marshall leads by 21. Week nine. The second half of the season takes off. What a run! And Tiki's got a firm grip on the rock. Plus, catch up with Pittsburgh's one-two punch. Touchdown! Let's get him this week. Exactly. Let's really pound us. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Welcome back to Safe Auto Insurance Company, where there's always someone to answer your call. Getting auto insurance from us has its benefits. Low monthly payments. Immediate coverage. And the peace of mind you get from being prepared should you be pulled over. That's right. In addition to being a good idea, having car insurance is the law. As you can see, representatives are standing by. So play it safe. Pick up the phone. And call now. Pick up the phone. The car is free. one 800 auto Melt Away Pounds with Fitness Made Simple's Winter Workout Special. Get two of our most popular videos, the 45-minute fat-burning workout and six-pack abs. The fat-burning workout blasts away fat by combining lightweight exercises at a heart-pumping cardio pace. And there's nothing better than six-pack abs for sculpting a lean midsection. I lost five pant sizes in 12 weeks using Fitness Made Simple. I start and end my day with Fitness Made Simple. It works for me. Call now to order. Fitness Made Simple, improving the bodies and lives of men and women everywhere. Marshall leads 28-7, but it could be a lot worse. Stan Hill has three touchdown passes, but he should have five or six. Well, look at what could have been. Here we go. No! Brad Bates misses it. No! Right through his hands. He's got another shot. Josh Davis, wait! No! Hits him in the face mask, and out it goes. That could have been two touchdowns. Two of those drops were on the same series. It led to two missed field goals. Instead of 14 points, they end up with zero. Nine catches, 98 yards for Bates and a touchdown. 11 catches for Davis and a touchdown. Fry going to work. And there's an excellent throw by Fry. The sliding Hickson makes the catch at the 46 yard line. Gain of 23 yards and a first down. One of the better throws tonight by Charlie Fry there. An authoritative. Stepped back, threw it on time, drilled it, and look at the command he's got. He's not worried at all. Down three scores. 428 and counting here in the third quarter. Play pick. And look at the speed of Goddard. He almost got Fry, but Fry pretty fast himself, and he gets leveled late out of bounds. Hit late by Deontay Wilson. As you see those flags fly in, there were more flags than there were officials. Did you see Goddard, though, on the end almost get Fry? Well, look at the speed of Goddard, number 50, but look at the speed of Fry. There's something to be said about fear. Oh, oh that was about three yards out of bounds. There's something to be said about fear making you run faster than you really can. 15 yards penalty, automatic. First down. You know, you, you compared Goddard to Dwight Freeney, former Syracuse defensive end, first-round pick of the Colts. Freeney, at his pro day up in Syracuse, ran a 4-3-8. I'm interested to see what Goddard runs when either the, the scouts come to Marshall to watch him run or at the combine. Well, he'll run fast, but at the combine, it will be the, the quickness drills that will impress him most. The first step, the side-to-side -side burst, the things that break down an offensive lineman's footwork and technique that allow a shorter guy to beat that offensive lineman. For more on Goddard, go to www.goddard50.com. He's got his own website. Fry back to throw with time, then hit as he releases it, and it is nearly intercepted. Goddard hit Fry again. 
This kid's unbelievable. He's all over the place. Well, look at number 50. He goes inside on a stunt. He makes his way through. He changes direction three times and still gets there in time to put a big hit. Look, he goes inside now, changes one, two, and back for the third for the big hit. The scouts here watching that today will be amazed at his ability to change direction. In a game this year against Miami of Ohio, he had nine tackles. That's a lot for a defensive end. Four tackles for a loss, four sacks, two fumble recoveries, and a forced fumble in one game. From the 31, Fry finds Hickson. A three-yard shot of the first down spilled to the 24. For more on Jonathan Goddard, let's go to Rob Stone. Dave, I worked that Marshall game, and that really was Goddard's coming out party, but his winding road to success this season got off to a late start due to an altercation at a local bar, but since then, as you guys said, he has just been on absolute tear. He's brought the quarterback down more than any Division One player. The Lombardi Award candidate is also first in another category. It's believed he is the only defensive player in college football with his own website to hype his play. The school set it up to give Lombardi voters stats and video of this stud defensive end. Leads the Mac and the nation in sacks. There's a pass over the middle that's incomplete. Arthur, the intended receiver. If you have a website with video and Goddard's on it, you better have a broadband connection or it's going to be nothing but a blur. Jabari Arthur, the second string quarterback. He splits his reps between receiver and quarterback. That ball was there to be caught. Maybe a receiver that gets all of the reps at receiver does catch it, but that leaves them in a fourth down situation, and here they go. Yeah, they have to. Fourth and three at the 24. Just over three minutes to go in the third quarter. Fly with time, and it's caught by Hickson for a first down, and more! Hickson to the five! Touchdown, Akron! First touchdown pass of the night for Fry, 24 yards on fourth down and three. And look at the time he's got to throw. Set, throw, no pressure at all. Got it in the middle, tries to knock it down. And when Hickson breaks that first tackle, he turns on the Jets. What a massive play for Akron. Fourth touchdown this season for Dominic Hickson. A starter at safety the last two years and the leading tackler last year moved the receiver in the spring. He's got Akron back in this football game. 258 remaining in the third period. Marshall 96 three. yards receiving and a touchdown. Hickson gets the touchdown, but look at the protection. Look at the offensive line. They give him all kinds of time. He steps up. He is unmolested. Now it's all Hickson. Hickson, who played defense last year, moved to receiver this year because Akron lost six of their top seven from last year, and he paid it off with that play. That has to be hard on Fry to lose all those receivers, to be throwing the new guys, including Hickson, to learn a new offense at the same time. And this year they have about 100 pass routes. Last year they might have had 20 or so. And so it's much more complex. It's one thing to lose your timing with guys that you know. It's another thing to go into a new system that's so complicated with guys that you do not know. Swagger to kick it away. Bradshaw and Span back to receive. It'll be Span. But he loses it, stays in bounds though at the 10, and then gets crushed at the 15 yard line. 19 days of primetime football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC continue with day 10 on Saturday. 7.45 Eastern Miami trying to bounce back after that miserable performance against North Carolina last week. Taking on Clemson at a 9.45 Eastern. ESPN2. Utah trying to stay perfect, taking on Colorado State. Normally, the third member of our uh, crew up in the booth, Rod Gilmore, uh, with us on Friday, but he'll be doing that game Saturday night in Salt Lake City. Utah, one of six undefeated teams left in Division 1A. A 
sweep to the near side as Bradshaw was able to break a couple of tackles and get about 17 on that running play. Well, that's where he is dangerous to the perimeter, but that also forces Akron's defense to run all the way to the sideline in all 11. Akron defenders, including the defensive line, were there. That is going to wear them out. You can see him breathing heavy, hands on hips. Now it's a cool night. It's not a hot day, but they're still breathing hard. It's about 35, 36 degrees. It feels like about four. And that's not hot. First down at the 32. They keep it on the ground, and Bradshaw spins out of another tackle, and finally is ripped down at the 33-yard line. Bradshaw is a walk-on, but better than most walk-ons with more on that, Rob Stone. Yeah, he ran for over 5,200 yards and scored 92 touchdowns in his prep career. He was a big-time recruit. Dave, you mentioned he went to UVA, off-field incident, changed his mind on how UVA handled it. That's when his aunt stepped in. I'll have more on Aunt Trish after this play. Can't wait to hear about Trish. Second down and nine at the 34. Delayed blitz, and Hill got rid of it and still completed it to the 40-yard line. Bates with the grab. Nice job by Hill. Back to Rob. Well, Aunt Trish had a son who went to Marshall, so she basically just picked up Ahmad and brought him down to West Virginia, saying, son, this is pretty much where you're going to be playing. He, he had a few choices, but Aunt Trish stepped in and said, this is the deal. You're going to Marshall. Coaches now say he's already added about 10 pounds since arriving and that he will be a 200-pound back with agility in the NFL. This is a big-time player, just a true freshman, guys. Getting a lot of playing time here in the second half for Earl Charles, you saw a moment ago on the sideline. And Hill has a man downfield, but it's incomplete. Broken up in the last second. Dyfel was the intended receiver. John Fuller got a hand in there. The terrific player for Akron second team, Mack, last year. Marshall has to put it away. But Hill didn't take a hit. 63, John Inman comes out and picks up a blitz and saves his quarterback from getting in. Look at him right here. He steps out. He nails Blackburn. And that, even though it's incomplete and they have to punt, saves his quarterback, Stan Hill. That is something this offensive line has improved on dramatically this season. This game is far from over, especially with Charlie Fry, a quarterback for Akron. They're going to get a chance to get the ball back with decent field position. And remember, Hickson returned a punt for a touchdown earlier this season. Now Akron has to burn a timeout. Fry playing through an injury to his right pinky, which he suffered earlier in the season. And also a, a, a thigh contusion suffered earlier in this game. Looked very good in that last drive. Led them down the field at a touchdown pass. Don't count him out. When you look at that right pinky, he's got a black bandage around it. When he heard it originally, it popped out another six or eight times during that game. He kept popping it back in, and he said it stung for about five minutes every time he did it. But he didn't have as much control over the ball. It was more wobbly than spiral. Now the pain is still there, but at least it isn't flopping out because of the bandage. Marshall coaches compare Fry to Ben Roethlisberger, starring with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Roethlisberger played mostly wide receiver until his final year of high school. But uh, Fry has been a quarterback since the age of eight when he used to dress up as a Cleveland Brown on Halloween. The Browns drafted Luke McCown last year, so I don't think they'll be taking a quarterback this year, but Fry will be in the NFL. O'Connor from the 25. Gets off a great kick, but maybe too deep again. A 60-yard punt, but Akron takes over at the 20. Oh, we'll find out as this game progresses if Fry, who dressed up as a Cleveland Brown quarterback as a young boy, if he's a trick or a treat, he's got monsters on that Marshall defensive line coming after him with Goddard and the rest of that crew. But he led them down the last time they had the ball for a touchdown. A lot of time left. 109 to go on Charlie Fry Day in Akron, Ohio. They're still Pushing Fry for the Heisman. Don't think that's going to happen. But still a uh, excellent senior quarterback. 
one of the best senior QBs in the country. On first down from the 20, Fry throwing on the run as Bash, who is flipped by Curtis Keys on the far side. Well, you take a spin like that, what you see is sky ground, sky ground darkness. <laughs> Here's your sky ground, ready? Right now he sees ground, now he sees sky, and then ground once again. Boy, he got a tour of Akron, Ohio. <laughs> got five yards, too, so it's a second down and five. Make that second and six officially. They spot it just shy of the 24-yard line. Another play fake. And Fry trying to get out of trouble does. Look out from behind. Fry hit as he throws. He's got Hickson, though. Inside the 40-yard line. That was all Charlie Fry. Well, that's the Charlie Fry we're talking about. And you talked about his chances for Heisman. Not good right now. This play is a Heisman play. It's a play action fake. It's a good fake. And right now, as the rush comes in around him, he breaks a tackle from one defensive lineman. He's got another defensive lineman. That's Hayes behind him. And all of a sudden, ugh, he gets rid of the ball as Hayes pushes him to the ground. Completion, impressive. John Heisman used to coach here at Akron. We go to the fourth quarter. It's been a great night for Stan Hill and Marshall. But Akron is not out of it. Down two touchdowns as we go to the final frame. Mmm, something smells good. Delivery? It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. DiGiorno? Get out. You fix the oven. You fix the oven? <laughs> you are handy. I'm calling mother. <laughs> Pizza? Introducing DiGiorno Microwave Pizza. Rises up golden brown in minutes. For oven baked taste in a hurry, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Microwave. Microwave, huh? At least I fixed something. Surviving cancer is still the biggest victory of my life. And I did it with the help of three Bristol-Myers Squibb medicines. Today, Bristol-Myers Squibb researchers are fighting our most serious diseases. Their life-saving medicines have turned many cancer patients into cancer survivors. Medicines for AIDS, heart disease, and serious mental illness reflect their commitment to research and to extending and enhancing human life. I'm living proof of that. Hope, triumph, and the miracle of medicine. Bristol-Myers Squibb Company. Can inspiration be comfortable? Can you navigate the world with ease? Yes. Does the most passenger room in its class make a difference? Yes. Can it combine that with confidence? With a five-star front crash test rating, absolutely. The totally new Chrysler 300, starting at 23,920. Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. Earlier tonight, our Wakefield Wildcats lost by a field goal, 21 to 20. That means no playoffs this year. Well, let's lock it up. Oops. I can stay a while. Me too. Come on in, boys. I'll bet you're hungry. At Applebee's, being part of the neighborhood is what we're all about. We started the night flashing this number, 33, which belongs to former Zip defensive end and linebacker Jason Taylor, now a star with the Miami Dolphins. The number retired in the ring of honor here at the Rubber Bowl. Will Akron honor Jason Taylor with a win? Taylor gave a pregame speech trying to motivate the Zips. They've uh, struggled tonight, but they find themselves in the game as we start the fourth quarter. Here's Chris Kasparic, the tight end for a couple of yards. Tackled by Roberto Terrell. Jason Taylor played linebacker here before he moved down to defensive end. He was a 6'6", 225-pound defensive end. They had to bulk him all the way up to 245 to play defensive end for the Miami Dolphins. J.D. Brookhart now needing to keep his offense centered and grounded. There's plenty of time. There's no reason to panic. One of the interesting things about Taylor, he was homeschooled in high school 
the NCAA had to change some academic standards to accommodate Taylor. Running play that gets about four yards off the left side, Brett Biggs, so it brings up third down and short. Biggs slow to get up. About 190 pounds, five feet, nine inches. He's going to stay in the game on a critical third down. And remember, Marshall, number one in the country in third down defense. Well, I think this is four down territory. If they don't get it here, they will go for it on fourth down. Play fake. Look out. Sack. Jameis Martin all over Charlie Fry. I don't know if it's four down territory now, though. Not anymore. That sack. Well, they almost have to go for it, though. Take a look. It'll be the left of your screen. Now, when Fry comes out, Martin isn't at all taken by the run fake. That's part of what happens when you don't have a good running fake or running game. Martin did not feel the need to crash inside to stop a run. He came upfield to stop a potential bootleg. Seventh sack of the year for Martin. Akron has to go on fourth down and 16. Down two touchdowns. No, it's a quick kick. And Fry with a pretty good boot. That takes an Akron hop. No, instead it went out of bounds. And uh, we got some extracurricular activity at the 25-yard line. Officials break it up quickly. Jim Borici and Kevin Atkins getting into it. This game is a bit chippy. We've got some extracurricular. This game's also noted for injuries. Noted for big plays. Byron Leftwich, two years ago when they played here at the Rubber Bowl, gets hit in the shin. His offensive line has to carry him after a 50-yard completion because he can't walk. But it's not enough. They lose the game. That was the first win ever against the ranked team for Akron, and it was Charlie Fry at the controls in that game. And the Fry himself dinged up earlier. Hurt his uh, left quad, also playing with a dislocated right pinky, which he hurt earlier in the year. Earl Charles off left tackle, and he barrels forward to the 32-yard line for about seven or eight yards. And Akron wants to get the football back and uh, get within striking distance. They got to stop the run. Haven't done that uh, very well. Not a lot of rushing yards for Marshall, but good yards per carry for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, and, and what Akron did early when they had success in this game was blitz the run and the pass, but then Hill started to burn them on the blitz. Let's see if they blitz again. Yep, they did. Flag flies in. It is a first down. But there's a penalty flag at the 30-yard line. So holding against Marshall. Stan Hill has been the story tonight. If not for a couple of drops, he'd have five touchdown passes, Trev. Yeah, he would. And the thing is, his offensive line has progressively gotten better. That Akron blitz confused that line early, but as the game went on, the Marshall line has picked up the blitz, and that's why Hill has had the time to throw those accurate passes. This score would be way out of hand if his receivers didn't drop touchdown passes. Fry has been good, but Hill has been better. He's been the story in this game, improving his draft status in the meantime. Second and 12. Here he finds Josh Davis. He's out to the 25 before Blackburn makes the stop. They're going to be you know, about uh, nine or ten yards shy of a first down. Akron needs a stop. Well, they need a stop to get the ball back, but also they need a stop because a punt from here by Marshall will leave Akron in pretty good field position. If Marshall can crank off a couple first downs here, it still puts Akron back deep. Dan Hill, perhaps the latest in a long line of Marshall quarterbacks to succeed in the NFL. Probably a late round draft pick, but passing for about 350 yards in this game. Here they pick up the blitz, and Hill has a completion and a first down. He finds Bates again. Hill hanging in there and delivering the ball for a first down. It throws to the Bates Motel. You can check in, but if you're Akron, you're not checking out today. Bates has been spectacular. 
number 83, top of your screen. It's just a quick turn in right at the first down yardage. And in the face of that blitz, Hill delivers on time. 11 catches for Bates, 11 for Josh Davis on the other side. But Stan Hill has been accurate. Short passes, medium range passes, and deep balls. Sweep to the near side for Charles. And then he just gets popped at the 40 yard line by DeAndre Earl, but he hung out of the football. The only mistake tonight, really, by Hill was an interception that wasn't his fault. Kiki Gonzalez batted it in the air, and Brian White picked it off. But that's it. Otherwise, Hill has been uh, terrific. And, and he's had to do it, Dave, under different circumstances. He's dropped back and delivered in the pocket when he's had time. But when the blitz has gotten there and hit him just as he threw, he still has been accurate. Stan Hill played for his dad, John, in high school in Oxford, Mississippi. Chose not to go to Ole Miss, where two of his brothers played football, and another brother played baseball. Instead, went to Marshall. He's been hurt the last two years, but he's playing well tonight, the healthiest he's ever been. And here he's got another completion and a first down as Jeff Mullins, the tight end, picks it up. And Dave, Stan Hill maintains a relationship with Eli Manning from Ole Miss. It's kind of a friendly relationship. A more of a mentor relationship comes from Byron Leftwich, the former Marshall quarterback who's now at Jacksonville. And as you look at his numbers, 405 yards, that's Leftwich like. Leftwich wants to make sure as a mentor that Stan Hill understands the legacy he's keeping up. Pennington first, then Leftwich. Pennington, one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. Leftwich before he got hurt, playing as well as anybody. Hill with another completion to the 40-yard line. And to the 39 is Josh Davis with his 12th catch. Akron Corners struggling to keep up with Josh Davis. Well, these wide receivers have been working hard. When you've got over 400 yards passing, even with the drops, you see so much that they're doing. Brad Bates with a touchdown pass. 400 yards, you can see these guys getting tired. They run it on first down to Bradshaw, and it gets about three. Trev, you played in the NFL 12 years with a lot of different quarterbacks. Compare Hill, some of the guys that you've played with and, and watched, and, and do you think Hill can succeed in the NFL? Well, I think the best college quarterback I played with was Jim McMahon because of his decision-making. No matter what the circumstances of the game, he would put the ball where it needed to be to win, and that is the legacy of Marshall with Pennington, Leftwich, and now Hill, the decision-making and the accuracy to make the play. Coming up next on ESPN2, North Texas and Louisiana Lafayette. The nation's leading rusher, Jamario Thomas, will be on display in that game following us. Josh Davis, the Mac's all-time leading passer, has been on display tonight. Picks up about 15 yards there. Well, Jamario just spectacular. He's setting records. He's just a freshman, and he wasn't supposed to play, but he has emerged as one of the most exciting runners in the country for North Texas. And Jim Donnan, who is a former coach of Marshall, one of the coaches that helped to build this program to where it is today, will be calling that game. And so he knows what to look for with that kind of a player. Set to kick off around 10:20 Eastern time here on ESPN2. Earl Charles straight ahead, and Charles gets to about the 16 for seven yards. Well, Akron really needed to score on that last drive, and that sack on third down really hurt him. We're at the Rubber Bowl in Akron, Ohio. Marshall looking for its sixth consecutive win, controlling its own destiny in the MAC East, trying to get back to a bowl game after missing the postseason last year. Day nine of 19 days of football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. Marshall has won six of the last seven MAC East titles, and winning the division is so important in this league because only two teams from the MAC are assured bowl bids. Here's Charles banging off defenders. What balance! But then he fumbles the ball before he crosses the plane, and Akron comes up with it. John Fuller with the fumble recovery. And Charles thinks he was in. He thought he stretched to get it. If he had not stretched, he probably would have fallen across. But the act of that extra effort is what cost him the touchdown. Let's see if he crosses the plane here as he is able to spin out of tackles. No, he fumbled it. It's a fumble. 
Akron not out of it yet. Every great story starts with a great adventure. Introducing the all-new Nissan Pathfinder with a 270 horsepower engine, three row seating for seven, GPS navigation and DVD entertainment, and more off-road capability than ever before. Because you can't talk about the mountaintop unless you actually see the mountaintop. Tell better stories in the new seven passenger, 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Lease the new seven passenger Nissan Pathfinder with a special introductory rate. Katie was sure of her cholesterol plan. She took medication, she ate right and ran. Yet it wasn't enough to get bad cholesterol low. What's this? I'm still here in the land of no. Switch to Crestor, her doctor said. You're not to blame. All cholesterol drugs simply aren't the same. When Crestor performed in a head-to-head -head test, its lowering effect was clearly the best. Crestor's proven effective, that's well understood. Would you like to try it? Why, yes. Yes, I would. Ask your doctor about Crestor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of serious side effects. Since Katie switched to Crestor, her cholesterol's much less. With Crestor and diet, it's the land of success. Get your free trial today, and you just might declare, I'm a Crestor success. Now you're getting somewhere. Taco Bell's Zesty Chicken Border Bowl is made right when you order it, so it tastes even better. Grilled all-white meat chicken, hot steaming rice, cool crisp lettuce, and Fiesta Salsa. For a freshly prepared meal, think outside the bun. If you have great credit, shouldn't you get a better rate when you refinance? At eLoan you do. We process your loan differently, online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender fees. Apply today at eLoan.com. Marshall leading Akron 28 to 14, but it could be a lot worse for Akron. It could. On one single drive, Brad Bates drops a touchdown. The next play, Josh Davis drops a touchdown, leads to a missed field goal. This drop touchdown led to another missed field goal, and this fumble leads to a recovery. That's three touchdowns that could have been turned out to no points. Swiger did miss a field goal for Akron. Here's a play fit. And everybody's covered. So Fry takes off. Again, showing his ability to run. Picks up about 13 yards. Roberto Terrell on the stop. That was a Roethlisberger like run there. It was. He's 6'4, about 230. Roethlisberger almost 250. But they both have this kind of speed. Now look at the acceleration when he takes off. He starts to run, and now he's at full speed. And he doesn't slide. He's got by every right the right to slide, but he wants those extra yards. He's the leading rusher for their team as well. Had a 31-yard touchdown in the first quarter on the first drive. Here he goes to the air. Oh, no! Oh, a big picked off at the 32-yard line. J.T. Rembert with his first interception of the season through the hands of Biggs. That's a tough one. It goes through his hands, put it right on him, hits him in the shoulder pad. Now, this pass is kind of hot. Look at how hot it comes out. 32 left of your screen is going to circle into the middle. Now, Biggs came from the right, but look how hot that pass came out. And Pruitt is happy about that. That's a break that they needed to stop that momentum. So turnover ratio even for Marshall as North Texas and Louisiana Lafayette follow us. This season, Marshall is plus seven. That's number two in the MAC. Last year, they were minus 19. That was one of the worst in the country. Earl Charles for what he did earlier with a great move inside the 15-yard line. Looking like Earl Campbell on the last couple of runs take away the fumble. Looking like Luke Skywalker on that one, getting up that high in the air. Where's the same number as Earl Campbell? Not as big, obviously, but check that. Whoa, that's a hurdle. I'll tell you, you're exposed when you do that, but I made it. Oh, that's an all-time personal highlight. Forget the game for a second, folks. That's an amazing play. Well, yeah, that, and you had him spinning out of tackles. 
on a previous carry where he fumbled it just before he crossed the plane. From the 13, Charles again spins out of a tackle and then finally goes down. Blackburn there with the tackle. Charles started only six games last year, still came, became the first Marshall running back with a thousand yards since 1998. And there he goes! You know what, when you watch film as a player, there are very few things that make all those jaded football players go, whoa, in the film room, and they will do that when they look at this tape tomorrow. 97 yards tonight, on pace for another 1,000-yard season. A senior from Brooklyn, New York, he could be in the NFL. Big kid, 6'1", 215, and you saw that leaping ability on that previous play. Here's the true freshman, Bradshaw, trying to bounce to the outside, can't. No gain on the play. Akron has two timeouts remaining. Not going to use one here. There have been some great offensive players at this school, some that uh, have not gone into the NFL. And we talked at the outset about the defense, how good the defense is, but you can just see tonight the skill of the offensive players for Marshall, and it starts with a quarterback, Stan Hill. Here they go empty on third down and 10. Hill with a quick throw and a good stick by Deontay Henry, pushing Davis out of play. They wanted a late hit, but won't get it. Well, that's what Akron needed here. With just over five minutes to go now, let's see what they decide to do. I think they go for it here. Fourth down and seven, the way uh, Hill has been throwing the football and those receivers have been able to get off of the corners, you might as well. Well, I think this is a nod to Charlie Fry from Bob Pruitt. Pruitt is not a guy who runs up the score. He makes it a point to not run up the score. But I think he knows how good Charlie Fry is and how accurate he can be in these situations. And this is a nod to Fry that he yeah. wants to get a pat. Yeah, I think now that they've called time, we'll see if they kick the field goal. I mean, if you get the field goal, it becomes a three possession game. It's almost impossible for Fry. If you go for the touchdown, you don't get it. It's still a two possession game. So actually, they should go for the field goal. We'll see what they do when we come back. Every great story starts with a great adventure. Introducing the all-new Nissan Pathfinder with a 270 horsepower engine, three-row seating for seven, GPS navigation and DVD entertainment, and more off-road capability than ever before. Because you can't talk about the mountaintop unless you actually see the mountaintop. Tell better stories in the new seven passenger, 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Lease the new seven passenger Nissan Pathfinder with a special introductory rate. ESPN puts the spotlight on the highlight with ESPN 25 The Book, which includes a bonus DVD of classic Sports Center commercials. ESPN 25 The Book, available now. Introducing the new cinnamon stick from Dunkin' Donuts. A warm, sweet, delicious way to top off your morning or afternoon. Dunkin' Donuts, bring yourself back. My fellow Americans, a vote for me is a vote for Chevy. With the biggest lineup of vehicles on the road, everybody wins. Let's make him say monkey. Yeah. The word is out. Now get big cash back or low APR financing for qualified buyers on a new 2004 Chevy Impala. That's big cash back or low APR on a 2004 Chevy Impala. Did you register to vote? For what? Oh, my. <laughs> Introducing the new cinnamon stick from Dunkin' Donuts. A warm, sweet, delicious way to top off your morning or afternoon. Dunkin' Donuts. Bring yourself back. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Marshall's field goal kicker Ian O'Connor is 0 for 2, but uh, they do need to kick the field goal, make it a three possession game here. Marshall leading by 14, trying to stay undefeated, get back to a bowl game after missing the postseason last year despite eight wins. 
27-yard field goal attempt for O'Connor. That nearly got blocked. And he misses again. He's 0 for 3. Akron still with a chance to get back into the game. Well, that's why I think the hesitation was there from Pruitt. Even though the field goal was the, the automatic right thing to do, he thought about going for the touchdown to get the extra points. Well, O'Connor missed a 35-yard field goal against Ohio State earlier this season. It may have cost him a win in Buckeye country. Stan Hill has been the star of the show, but Charlie Fry and the Akron Zips aren't out of it yet. Here's to the beginning, a chance to carve out a new path. For this time, we'll be different. This is the year we leave our mark. This is the game we play together. This is our season. The colors change, the fires burn, and the possibilities are endless. The NCAA Championships on ESPN. Got athlete's foot? Think fast. Lamisil AT cures athlete's foot with just one week's use. If you use Tenactin or Lotrimin AF, you'll be treating for four long weeks. But one week with Lamisil AT keeps you athlete's foot free for three months. There's no better way to cure athlete's foot. Every great story starts with a great adventure. Introducing the all-new Nissan Pathfinder with a 270 horsepower engine, three-row seating for seven, GPS navigation and DVD entertainment and more off-road capability than ever before. Because you can't talk about the mountaintop unless you actually see the mountaintop. Tell better stories in the new 7th Passenger 270 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Lease the new 7th Passenger Nissan Pathfinder with a special introductory rate. Remember that guy who used to be called Wild Thing? Yeah, that guy. He's back. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. The Akron cheerleaders still cheering with uh, their team down two touchdowns, but with quarterback Charlie Fry, zips aren't out of it. 4.37 to go. They got a chance. However, for the sixth time in six second half possessions, they started their 20 yard line. They have not had good starting field position in this half. Fry. Hanging in the pocket and delivering to Morris Ellington out near the 37-yard line. That'll stop the clock. Following us on ESPN2, North Texas, with Jamario Thomas, the NCAA leading rusher, taking on Louisiana Lafayette. We'll start the clock again. In the college game, the clock stops on a first down. Akron also has two timeouts remaining. Here's Biggs being tackled at the 44-yard line by Curtis Keyes, who was nearly on the ground when he made that stop. Big pass alongside Trevor Maddich, Rob Stone at the Rubber Bowl in Akron with first place in the Mid-American Conference Eastern Division on the line. Fry with time. Dumps it off, but it's dropped. Dan Bash couldn't hang on. The Rubber Bowl is seven miles from the University of Akron campus, and they made a lot of upgrades to the facilities at Akron, but they need to get the Zips, a new stadium. But they're heading the right direction, an $18 million new facility with locker room and indoor practice facility. And on campus, new student union, new rec center. It looks like the campus has been completely transformed, and that makes a huge difference for recruits. Well, the university owns this stadium. The city didn't want it. They sold it to the university back in 1974, $1. And I think Akron got robbed. <laughs> Man. Third down and four. Pry with time. Finding Biggs. And he can't slip the tackle, and he's a yard shy of the first down. Good open field stop by Terrell. Now Akron has to go on fourth down and about a yard. They get up there quickly. Marshall's not ready. Fry is probably just going to snap and go forward, which he does, and he gets the first down. That was a good decision there by J.D. Brookhart catching Marshall off guard. Well, the, the rule is that the officials have to give the defense reasonable time to get set, but they don't have to give the defense all day long to get set. <laughs> Brookhart with a heads-up call there. 
Still plenty of time. Three and a half to go. Akron with two timeouts left. Down two scores. And Fry's pass caught by Hickson. And then he's dropped by three Marshall defenders. Eight of nine on the play. Lost and his hat. Hickson lost his lid on that play. And that will allow them to stop the clock without Akron having a call for time. David and Sally, the parents of Charlie Fry, watching on Charlie Friday here in Akron. I'll tell you what they saw was Jonathan Goddard spin inside the right tackle and get there just too late. Fry got rid of the ball before Goddard could put the hit on him. There's another injured player at the 45 yard line. It might still be Hickson that's down. He got up and then, yep, it's Hickson. Got up and then went back down to one knee. Which is a good thought. He got hit hard enough for his helmet to pop off. This is their best receiver, number 23 now. He's exposed when he reaches up to catch the ball, but then he's able to cover up again. And I think that's the shot. He got a face mask in the back of the helmet, hard enough to get that helmet knocked off. Curtis Keyes with the hit. Marshall has been very physical on defense tonight. We're here to learn how a new right guard extreme cool spray keeps you cool under the most extreme conditions. See, cool spray keeps you cool and dry no matter what's going down. Stay cool, bro! Ooh, he's cute. Get extreme. Get right guard. Are you an astronaut? Yo, stay cool. Only a moan faucet puts pause control right at your fingertips. It'll help you with those important tasks. Or not. Moan. Buy it for looks, buy it for life. some Tostitos chips and dip and grab some college football on ESPN. If you have great credit, shouldn't you get a better rate when you refinance? At eLoan you do. We process your loan differently, online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender fees. Apply today at eLoan.com. Closed caption for selected programming is brought to you by Sketchers Work Footwear. Skechers Work Footwear. Footwear that plays as hard as it works. Boots, Oxfords Athletics. Footwear you want to wear that meets all safety standards. Skechers Work, made to last. Akron's best receiver, Dominic Hickson, shape, uh, shaken up on the last play. Charlie Fry certainly would like to have Hickson for this uh, final three and a half minutes. And Fry certainly can get it done. There's enough time. And Fry would love to make it truly his day. He's got to get him within seven first, and here he goes. He has a 31-yard rushing touchdown already tonight, and he stops the clock there on that run. Well, there are almost two dozen scouts here from the NFL to watch him. The mechanics, such as throwing the ball, speed, able to run, those are mechanics. The intangibles are what they're even more interested in, leadership in a comeback. As we hit the three-minute mark, he delivers again, and Hickson's back in the game inside the 20. To the 19-yard line, that'll stop the clock again. That's uh, one of the beauty, uh, the beauties of college football, the fact that the clock stops to move the chains. North Texas and Louisiana Lafayette coming up next on ESPN2. Fry trying to get his team within seven. Then either an onside kick or they got to stop him on defense. Here's Ringer, the backup running back, taking it inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. Tackled by Williams. Pass complete to Ringer. Fry's working the field. He's doing it scrambling. He's hitting the spaces between the zones. Marshall has too many people on the field. They throw the flag, and that'll stop the clock. Another mistake by Marshall. They had 12 guys on the field. They could not get that extra defender off the field in time. Well, if the offense doesn't run in a new personnel group, the defense doesn't have the wherewithal from the officials to do this. Top of your screen, right of your screen, guys running off, and he's doing it in a lackadaisical fashion. Note that the offense is set. Now, if the offense ran on somebody else, the defense would be allowed time to do that. Because the offense did not, they could snap the ball as fast as they want. 
It's either 12 men on the field or illegal substitution. Regardless, it's a penalty against Marshall. It'll move the football to the six yard line. Here's the call. Substitution infraction on the defense. 12 players was running off the field. Five yard penalty, first down. And more than that, it stops the clock and allows the Akron offense to get reset. Sixth penalty for Marshall today, just one called on Akron. It is fry time for the Zips. Can he get him into the end zone, get Akron within seven, and then can the Zips get the ball back to see if he can do it again? Fry has a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, and he's going to go over and talk with J.D. Brookhart here as the officials still confer, and this is a timeout without having to call a timeout. We're talking about how many yards of the penalty. Well, as they talk about the yards for the penalty, this is a good thing for the offensive actor. And keep in mind, they've got a brand new wide receiver group. One of them played defensive back last year. Another one is their backup quarterback. And by not having to do hurry up every single play, they can think about their assignment, think about what they need to do. Two minutes and 26 seconds remaining. Marshall up two touchdowns. The Herd has won five straight games, controls its own destiny in the MAC East. So important to win your division in the Mid-American Conference. And uh, Bob Pruitt knows that all too well as Marshall missed the postseason last year. Only two teams from the MAC get bowl bids. Marshall was 8-4 last year. They had a win at Kansas State. Don't go to a bowl. That's one of the reasons that Marshall is happy about their move to Conference USA next year. There are five bowl tie-ins there, much less likely for an anomaly like that to happen. If Akron should somehow come back and win, we'd have a three-way tie. Otherwise, Marshall would go to 6-0, and 6-3 overall. And Marshall is probably the uh, second or third best team in Conference USA right now. First down and goal. Fry pumping a couple of times and finding a wide open Montgomery. Touchdown, Akron. I don't know if you saw a highlight of Ben Roethlisberger a few weeks ago standing, pumping, pumping, and throwing in the end zone for a touchdown. Watch Fry here. Well, he looks all the way to his right, comes back all the way to the middle of the field. And his parents are thrilled to death. That's my boy. All the way up from Mississippi. The point after is good, and it's a seven-point game. The Marshall coaches compare Fry to Roethlisberger, and he literally looked like Roethlisberger a few weeks ago when he was throwing a touchdown pass for the Steelers on that play. Fry has the zips within seven after an 80-yard scoring drive. If you have great credit, shouldn't you get a better rate on your home equity line? At eLoan, you do. We process your loan differently, online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender fees. Apply today at eLoan.com. Now that they're parents, they've admitted their addiction to evil. I don't have a problem. But old habits die hard. It was just a little slip. Seed of Chucky. Rated R starts November 12th at theaters everywhere. Gotta go. For those who never quit, the battery that never quits. Energizer. Keep going. Only a moan faucet puts pause control right at your fingertips. It'll help you with those important tasks. Or not. Moan. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. Second touchdown pass for Charlie Fry tonight. Third touchdown overall, including a 31-yard rushing score. Coming up following our game, we'll take you to North Texas and Louisiana Lafayette here on ESPN2. A lot of time left in this one. 2.18 to go. Akron down seven. They will likely onside kick 
They still have two timeouts remaining, even if they don't recover. I tell you, there's a there's a lot of people in this hometown about an hour and a half from here. His parents drove on in. A lot of fans come saw him in high school are here to see if they can get this onside kick and give Charlie Fry another shot to tie this game. Marshall should have had this game wrapped up. Two touchdown passes dropped. There was a running back that fumbled the ball on the one yard line. Bob Pruitt's team should have this game won. Also three missed field goals by the thundering herd of this game. Swiger, the 25 year old former walk on is ready for the onside kick but now we have a timeout called by Akron they have to blow a timeout let's go to Reese in the studio Reese all right Dave some of you might be looking for the Sun Belt battle between North Texas and Louisiana Lafayette David Schexnader can't handle the snap on the punt the mean green all over it and that gives an opportunity for the nation's leading rusher to cash in the miscue Jamario Thomas the freshman untouched by the raging Cajuns North Texas up seven to nothing early we'll get you to that game as soon as you guys are done so seven nothing there 28 21 is the score here let's check in with Rob Stone on the sideline guys on that whole last drive Jason Swiger the kicker for Akron was practicing his onside kicks into the cage. You know, there's kind of those two. There's that kick where you pop it up, you hope for the bounce, and then that dribbler. I asked him, which one are you better at? He just smiled and said, whatever one coach calls. So he's been warming up for the onside kick for about the last five minutes or so. Well, Swiger was cut three times by ex-Akron coach Lee Owens. He tried to walk on three times, got cut, then he finally made the team and then earned a scholarship. And he's 25 years old, a junior, Second team all Mac last year. Swiger is ready for the onside kick. It's got to go 10 yards before Akron can touch it. And it's touched by Marshall that Akron gets it at the 48 yard line. How about Jason Swiger? Swiger never thought about college football. He didn't know what to do with his life. And someone said, you're a great kicker. Go try out at Akron. He did. He was cut three times, finally made the team, and here's the play of his life. And it's the second bounce. It's this bounce right here, right in front of the defense. That's the key. It comes up. It hits Josh Davis right in the chest. And look at the reaction on the Akron sideline. And look at Pruitt. Pruitt thinks they've got it. It comes right to Josh Davis, the best hands on the team, but they can't come up with it. Can Charlie Fry do it on Charlie Fry Day on Friday night football? Back to throw on first down for the 48. Guns that one home inside the 40. And to the 34-yard line is Hickson. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. One timeout remaining for the Zips. And Terrell lost his shoe. Right now, Marshall only has 10 guys on the field. They finally get in an extra DB. Well, yeah, an extra DB who's cold. But they got to call timeout. That helps Akron as Marshall has to burn a timeout. Marshall has to burn a timeout because Terrell lost his shoe, and they didn't have the right guys on the field. Well, Mariah Anderson, number three, is the guy that ran out there, but he'd been standing on the sideline. He was absolutely stone cold. It would have been a potential disaster for Marshall if they'd have run that play. Now, number two, okay, right there. Yeah. That's when the shoe comes loose, and that's when the shoe comes out. That's one of the reasons guys spat their shoes. That means you, you do tape on top of the shoe up your ankle so that the shoe can't twist off your foot that way. His shoes weren't spatted. He's going to go back in the game, though. Well, Akron had to burn a timeout before the onside kick. Now Marshall does. Fry with 288 passing yards, two touchdowns, a rushing touchdown. Well, we hype Mac quarterbacks coming in, talking about how many guys from this league have gone on to the NFL. What a job both Stan Hill of Marshall and Charlie Fry of Akron have done tonight. Two more Mac quarterbacks who have a future in professional football. 
Fry on first down from the 34. Pass hits it again inside the 30. And to the 27 yard line. Hickson, a starter at safety the last two years, the leading tackler last year, moved the wide receiver, and you can see why. And Charlie Fry is the one that convinced the coaches to move him. Fry could have gone pro last year. J.D. Brookhart talked him into staying. Fry just throws that one away wisely, so it brings up third down and three. They're in four-down territory at the 27-yard line of Marshall. But it's interesting the choices they have here. The defense will want to stop them from getting that first down three yards up the field. However, it might not be a bad time now to go play action and go for the touchdown and then go for the first down on fourth down if they don't make it. Don't forget, join North Texas, Louisiana Lafayette in progress after this game. Minute 40 to play, third down and three. Here comes a blitz. Fry gets away from Goddard. And his pass is incomplete over the middle. He was trying for Montgomery, who caught the touchdown pass in the last drive. Goddard almost got Fry that time. And he had to actually quiet down the crowd. They were cheering him on. Many of them fans from where he went to high school, Willard, Ohio, about an hour and a half from here, a tiny town. And yet he had to wave them down with his hands. It's fourth down. They have to go. They're two for three tonight on fourth down. They have to get just past the 25-yard line. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Fry trying to buy time. Fry still looking. And he has a first down to Hickson inside. 20. That'll stop the clock. Deontay Wilson on the tackle. 121 to go in the fourth quarter. Fry defeated. Goddard. Look at Goddard here, right on your screen. He's going to come upfield, try to contain him as he goes out, but he slips and falls. That allows Fry time to come back to the other side, and that is what the scouts talked about. The intangible, the poise. We are seeing really good quarterback play from both Stan Hill and Charlie Fry. Fry again, gunning that one. Hits Ellington on the chest, but he can't hang on. Ball, ball, ball. That ball was on fire, hitting Ellington right between the one and the nine. It comes out hot. Oh, and Fry shaking his hands. Shaking his head afterwards. What can you do? This is Fry's father, his mother there to his right. Come on, this is my boy. He's trying to impress a national audience, catch the ball. Fry has gotten better as the game has gone on. 304 passing yards for Fry, 435 for Hill. Second and 10 of the 18. Fry with time. Goes to the sideline, another drop. Through the hands of Dan Bash. That's the second time that he hasn't been able to hang on. A lot of missed opportunities on both sides in terms of drop balls. A couple of touchdowns dropped by Marshall. You know, it's not raining, but it has been raining in the last couple of days. This turf has absorbed a lot of moisture, and those gloves that they wear are almost slick when there's a slight amount of moisture. Stay tuned. The top running back in the nation, at least statistically, Jamario Thomas comes your way for North Texas next against Louisiana Lafayette. Third down and 10 at the 18-yard line. Fry through the hands of a receiver. That pass was too hot. Ellington again, the intended wideout. And it's fourth down and 10. Akron's three out of four on fourth down, but they got to get 10 yards. And could be Fry's last opportunity. Four straight incompletions. And Akron is going to call its final timeout. Let's go to Rob Stone on the sideline. Oh, guys, Charlie Fry just came over talking to his head coach, J.D. Brookhart, saying one name. Give me Hickson. Just give Hickson the play so I can throw it to him. He's obviously very upset about these drop balls lately. He's gunning it. Guys are dropping him. One last chance, perhaps. Fourth down and 10 for Akron coming up down by seven. 
As you can see, the phones never stop ringing here at Safe Auto Insurance Company. Right this minute, people just like you are calling and getting car insurance while they wait. Truth is, many of the line has risen to the occasion. The bats are chipping Jonathan Goddard and keeping him away from Fry. The 154th play of the game, the most important one. Fourth down and 10. Fry trying to keep the zips alive. Trying to buy some time again. Being chased by Martin. And then just lobbing to the end zone. There's a man there! No signal yet! Touchdown! Touchdown! Akron! Jason Montgomery! and somehow found Montgomery, who hung on to the ball in the back of the end zone. The all-important extra point is good, and we are tied at 20 years. The NFL scouts knew about Charlie Fry, and now America does on Friday Night Football. Fourth and 10, last opportunity. Now, nobody's open, and so he uses that magical ability to buy time with his scramble, and being chased, throws it up high enough that Montgomery can wait for it in the very corner of the end zone. Foot gets down, ball is secured, touchdown. And look at J.D. Brookhart, proud of the man that he convinced to come back for his senior year. David and Sally Fry making the trip from Willard, Ohio, home of about 6,000 people. And they're probably all here still even though most of the fans have left thinking the zips are out of it down 28 to 14 with three and a half minutes left in the game but this one's not over stan hill 435 yards three touchdowns 45 seconds 45 seconds remaining there are the uh, overtime rules should we get there well this game ain't over with uh, the way marshall has been able to throw the football tonight each team gets one possession for the opponent's 25-yard line per overtime until winner is decided. And then starting with the third overtime, teams must go for the two-point conversion. But, again, Marshall has had tremendous success throwing the football downfield against Akron's defensive backs. That's right. We've got two outstanding quarterbacks on this field, not just one. Marshall's field goal kicker is also over three, but how about this? Swiger kicks it out of bounds, and Marshall will get the start at the 35-yard line. There's a gift. And Stan Hill will take it. How about that? Well, he had been kicking it out of the end zone. The ball at the 35-yard line. First down. Let's go to Reese Davis. Dave, as soon as you guys are done with this barn burner, we'll take you down to Lafayette. North Texas taking on Louisiana Lafayette and the mean green. Scott Hall keeping it himself. North Texas on top. Louisiana Lafayette 14 nothing. We'll get you to that game as soon as you're done at the Rubber Bowl. All right, Greece, 45 seconds remaining. Marshall from the 35-yard line. Hill with time throwing into traffic and it's caught at the 39 yard line. Marshall only has one timeout remaining, had to burn a timeout on defense on the previous series. Their field goal kicker is 0 for 3 tonight. They've all been short field goals. Second and five. Hill pumping, hit as he releases and it is incomplete, nearly picked off on the far sideline by Fuller. Well, he's looking for a push, but we talked about the dilapidated state of this stadium. The field is not that way. It's relatively recently replaced, but when it gets wet, it's got certain characteristics of grip. The Akron players have not been slipping tonight. The Marshall players have been. Home field advantage. What a game. And it's not over. Not even close. 
Third down and six from the 39. Hill pumps. Going deep, throwing it in double coverage. Davis almost caught it anyway. At the 26-yard line, Henry and Fuller were down there for Akron. Well, they knew who the playmaker is. Josh Davis, and as this ball comes down, he is completely blanketed. Not pass interference, good non-call. And now we're down to it. 12 seconds, but it's fourth down. Now. Marshall has to punt it away, giving Charlie Fry maybe one more opportunity at a Hail Mary. Dominic Hickson does have a punt return for a touchdown this season, and he's back to receive this kick standing in his 30. O'Connor drops it! And he's taken down, and he lost the ball! That stops the clock with six seconds left. Effort to kick a field goal. Marshall loses this game it'll be because of special teams O'Connor with three missed field goals and now this let's check in with Rob on the sideline guys there may be a reason for that drop I was standing next to Ian O'Connor who was warming up taking field goals figuring that's what he was going to be called for he was not aware that the team was in punt form he was in a full 50 yard sprint to get out onto the field in time to take that snap the punt wow well, when you kick field goals, you're not warming your hands up. You know, if you're going to catch a punt snap, you keep your hands warm in addition to your legs. Timeout called by Akron. No timeouts remaining now. That actually had to be in Marshall because they were the only one that had a timeout left. So it was on Marshall, even though the official signaled Akron. And Swiger, who's already missed tonight. We've not had a made field goal in this game. His long this season is 46. This would be a 43-yarder. Jason Swiger trying to win the game. Akron was down 28 to 14 with three and a half minutes left. Now the Zips have a chance to win the game in regulation. Thanks in part to this great catch by Monday. For those who never quit. The battery that never quits. Energizer. Keep going. Buddies on Pathway to Glory, the wireless online multiplayer war game, only on the Engage QD. Rated T for Teen. Engage anyone, anywhere. The Eastern Division lead of the MAC on the line. Akron can make it a three way tie if Jason Swiger can hit this 43 yard field goal. Akron was down 14 points three and a half minutes ago. This for the win. Akron wins! Eastern Division. What a comeback by Charlie Fry and the Zips. And on Charlie Friday, Fry gets it done and he's with Rob Stone. Yeah, it's called Friday for a reason. How did you improve from the first half to the second half? What led to so much more success? Hey, we just kept believing. And uh, I went in at halftime and told the guys, hey, we got a second half to play. It was a little down in there, but you know, anything could happen. And that showed today. That's why you play four quarters of football, because every play matters. At what point did you think the moment
momentum had swung in your favor? Um, you know, late in the fourth quarter, I think when I hit Hicks or uh, Jason on that slant pattern for a touchdown, we were down by seven. And then we got the onside kick. I mean, I just, I just thank God that, that he puts us in this position. Is, and, and we just love him with all our heart. And, hey, things happen. You played a lot of football. Anything ever like this in your career? I've been on the flip side of it. You know, uh, we've been beat by Hail Mary once. And, you know, we've been beat last year by two last-second field goals. But, hey, it's so much better on this side of it. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Hey, thanks a lot. Charlie Fry brings Akron back from two touchdowns down late in the fourth quarter. And the Zips win it on a 43-yard field goal by Jason Swiger. Final score, 31-28, Akron. For Trevor and Rob, I'm Dave Pash. North Texas and Louisiana Lafayette coming up next on ESPN2. And we welcome you to Cajun Field in Lafayette, Louisiana. We are here at the almost conclusion of the first quarter, along with Jim Donnan, the coach, and Stacey Dale Schumann. I'm Jerry Punch. Two minutes and 31 seconds to play here in the first quarter, and it has been turnover city. We'll explain what's happened with the points. And a great completion upfield by North Texas down to the about the three-yard line to Johnny Quinn. Now North Texas has scored twice.